The playoff path for Lake Catholic stops here in Twinsburg, a familiar site where the Cougars won a regional game here three years ago before winning their third state championship back in 2001. Tonight it's a week five rematch with the Walsh Warriors. And Comcast has it for you next. from Twinsburg High School, the site of the Division III Regional Semis. It is Comcast Playoff Football. We are so glad that you are tuned in and locked in to the Muscle Cower Practice Center pregame show. Hello, everybody. Once again, I'm Jeff Morgani, and we got another awesome football game in store tonight where two teams that met back in week five are going to clash tonight. You can see the Walsh Warriors and the Lake Catholic Cougars. Lake Catholic, 9-2, and two, victorious last week, 42-14 to 14 in their first playoff win in game of the season, beating Hubbard and doing it in convincing style. Meanwhile, the Walsh Warriors last week beat a familiar foe to the Lake Catholic Cougars. That was Notre Dame Cathedral Latin winning that game 24 to 16. Joining us once again, the Marks brothers. We bring in our play-by-play -play man tonight, Mark Schwab. And Schwab, you know, the last two times, or actually the last time this team met, 34-13, uh, Lake Catholic won. But it was a couple of big plays that spelled doom for Walsh. Yeah, and that's what happens when you get big plays. They can make a lopsided score out of a game that probably shouldn't be all that lopsided. But to get a fumble inside the red zone, there's a short field for a touchdown. A big play goes the other way and a kick return for a touchdown. Jerry Rarden himself, the, the Warriors, Wish he could have called a couple of plays different late in the game, and all of a sudden, 34-13, you look at that, and you're like, man, the Cougars are all over them. Well, in a sense, but Walsh is a very good football team, and this is going to be a tough game tonight. Lake Catholic scored 14 points in that second half, and they, their defense held Walsh. Uh, their running backs, their quarterback, and their wide receiver, Mike Chambers, we're going to be calling his number quite a bit. Uh, scoreless and out of the end zone, but it was the ability for Lake Catholic, that offensive line, that young offensive line that we're going to talk about momentarily, to control the line of scrimmage, and Lake Catholic was able to control that line of scrimmage the first time they met. And when you have Eric Katani back there and Joe Timichuk and Corey Perneski, it could spell trouble. Well, yeah, and it helps that some of those guys can block also. Katani and, uh, well, actually all three, Timichuk and Perneski, not exactly the biggest guy on the planet, but he can lay you out if he needs to. And they do that up against an eight-man Walsh front. They'll put, you know, four backers, four down linemen, and they are a team that likes to blitz, although they didn't do it a whole lot against the Cougars last week. So we'll see how they do it against it tonight. We talk about the Walsh Warriors and their quarterback, Doug Snyder, their wide receiver, Mike Chambers. They've got two running backs that have not played in a, in a game together and on the field at the same time. One of them last week, Isaiah Shepard, ran for 161 yards. He's not even a starter. It's sophomore running back Mark Wooldridge. He didn't play against Lake Catholic the first time because of a broken leg, but when he did come back against Benedictine, he ran for over 100 yards. That could be trouble for Lake Catholic having both those running backs tonight. Yeah, he's pretty good. Woolridge, as you mentioned, 100 yards. Yeah, that's a playoff game, you know, against a pretty good NDCL team. If that's your one-two punch, two guys that can cross the century mark, that's a deep backfield. Shepard, they both play on defense, too. Shepard's no slouch. We talked about his numbers. And Woolridge with the bad ankle even came back. You know, he, what, he had a little broken or cracked leg or whatever you like to term it. You know, the thing's blown up. He's not going to play at all. So not quite a full break, but you can't tell me that didn't bother him for more than one week. I'm sure he ran hurt a little bit part of the, a little bit of the year there. And he had the sore ankle last week. He didn't get to play, but number one is out there for Walsh Jesuit. And I'm sure we'll be calling his name and also Shepard's name. Let's bring in the other Mark's brother, the tandem. We bring in Mark Chimo. And Mark, you called the game last week with Schwabi and this defense for Lake Catholic has been rather stingy. Eight consecutive wins and over that, an average of allowing just 12 points a game. Well, they do a good job, Jeff. They like to mix things up. They like to go in one-on-one -on -one coverage a lot, but also they like to drop back into some zones. They double team a lot if they have to. If they see that the pass is working for the other team, they'll drop back and start double teaming some people. Another thing they like to do is they like to bring the blitz. They got some quick linebackers. They can really plug all the holes on that offensive line. They can get into the backfield, force the quarterback to make some poor throws. The Walsh defense is pretty tough. Talking to Coach Bell earlier in the week, and we're going to hear both coaches' interviews coming up momentarily, but Coach really concerned about uh, how quick and how aggressive this defense for Walsh is. They played a Hoban team with Terrell Sutton, and they held Hoban to just 13 points. They lost that game 13-7. to 7. 
and coach thinks they're going to blitz a lot more tonight than what they did back in week five. The key to Walsh defenses, Jeff, is their speed. They have got one of the fastest defenses in the area. They're going to be pressuring Katani all night long when he gets the football. They're going to be keeping the pressure on Ricky Stanzi. Last week, Ricky Stanzi could pretty much throw the ball wherever he wanted to. It was a bit slower defense. This time, he's going to have to make some quicker read and some sharper throws. Well, the winner will move on to the regional finals next week, and we are right here going to be televising this one right for you on the comcast game of the week a presentation of scholastic sports you've got walsh you've got lake catholic we're going to step aside the mustard carver practice center pregame show will continue you're going to hear from coach jerry raritan of walsh and mike bell of lake catholic when well, the mustard carver practice center pregame show continues right after this timeout. welcome back to the mustard carver practice center pregame show mark team along here with local legend Head coach Jerry Raritan of the Walsh Warriors, 25 years at the helm of this club. Coach, let's go back to week five against this Lake Catholic team, a tough loss, 34-13. Only a few mistakes really cost you this ball game. Really not interested in going back to week five, but if we must, yeah, we, we had a few. We had a few too many, and, uh, and they take it to us, too. I mean, they, they outplayed us. I think they were just more physical than we were the second half, so we got to do two things. we got to get rid of those mistakes, and we have to be more physical for four quarters. Coach, you mentioned Mike Chambers, wide receiver, one of the best you've ever coached, along with Doug Snyder, both three-year starters. Are these really guys, these the leaders of your club? Oh, well, they definitely are. You know, it all starts with Doug, obviously, at his position as quarterback, but then to have a kid with his leadership capabilities and so forth, um, he, uh, he, he, brings, he brings his team along, and people follow him, and, and Doug's just done an excellent job for three years. Coach, 1999, you led this school to a state championship. You've got the experience. These kids don't. What kind of things can you tell them from that run? Well, I, I think the kids have learned. The kids learned at one point in the season, uh, soon after our game at Lake Catholic, that in order to be effective, we're going to have to play with the same intensity uh, for four full quarters. And, uh, you know, for the second half of the season, I think our kids have done that. And um, they've, they've learned that that's, that's the only way we can play the game. It's the only way we're going to be successful. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do. Coach, best of luck to you tonight. Thank you very much. Coach Jerry Raritan, head coach of the Walsh Warriors. It's over to the other side of the field. Mark Schwab with Coach Mike Bell, the Lake Catholic Cougars. Welcome back to the Muscle Chiropractic Center pregame show. Mark Schwab on the sideline with me, the head coach of the Cougars, Mike Bell. Coach, a familiar foe tonight, Walsh Jesuit. You played him, you beat him in week five. Do you like playing a team that you played already? Does that even matter? Does it factor in at all? It doesn't matter. I mean, week five, you know, we wouldn't be standing here talking if we hadn't beat them in week five, so it, it doesn't matter. How much, and you look at that, I don't know, you guys got a couple of big plays there. The score was a little bit lopsided. Um, sir, this is a tough team over here. Oh, it is. They're here for a reason. They're a very good football team. They beat a lot of quality opponents, without question. Mike Chambers, uh, one of the stars they got over there. What do you do with somebody like that? Well, you try and limit his big plays is what you try to do. Mm -hmm. Who gets him tonight? Uh, well, we're going to spread the wealth a little bit. Let, let a few guys try and handle them and, uh, and see what happens. Defensively, they run the 4-4, eight guys up front. Um, what can you do there? Well, usually they are one of the more aggressive teams in terms of blitzing that we play. Uh, they didn't do a whole lot of that uh, week five. So, I mean, we prepared all week as if they will come off the edges like they normally do. And uh, we'll see what happens. Coach, your keys tonight? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we have to do a great job up front with protection. I think Ricky Staines has got to have a good game for us at quarterback, and our defense has got to play very well. All right, best of luck to you. Good luck tonight. All right, thank you. All right, it's Coach Bell of the Cougars. We'll pause. That's going to do it for the Muscle Chiropractic Center pregame show. When we come back, the starters, the keys, and the kickoff. Straight ahead on the Comcast Game of the Week. Welcome back to the Comcast Game of the Week. Mark Schwab, Mark Chimo from atop Twinsburg's Tiger Stadium. Tonight's keys to the game brought to you by Honda of Menor, home to the largest selection of new and used Hondas in Lake and Geauga counties. Stop in and test drive a five-star safety-rated Civic, Accord, Pilot, Odyssey, and CRV. There's a limited supply of the 2004 Hondas left. That's Honda of Menor, nobody bigger, nobody better. And, Mark, let's start with the keys for the Lake Catholic Cougars. Our keys for the Cougars to win this game tonight. Long sustained drives just like last week against Hubbard. They scored on their first six possessions. That was enough. 42-14 the final score. Play with confidence. They've beaten Walsh before. They know what it takes. Week five, they beat them 34-13. They have the momentum going into this game. Finally, create some opportunities. They got to force turnovers, force mistakes. That's how they won the first game. And this is what the game has won in playoff time is forcing mistakes. And finally, keys for the Warriors. 
Walsh, no mistakes. Turnovers and bad play calling blew it for them in week five. They got to be clean football tonight. No bad play calls. Hold on to that football. They need to get the ball to Mike Chambers. Mike Chambers, the playmaker, spark plug of this offense against Lake in week five. Five catches, 103 yards in the first half alone. Finally, Walsh needs to be aggressive defensively. They have the speed on defense. They need to utilize it to their advantage. Burke Howard ready to kick it off here for the Cougars. Waiting back for it is Mike Chambers, and they're not going to let him get it. As it gets past Relly, and Chambers will get it back at the 10. Should tell you, tonight's opening kickoff brought to you by LifeQuest Medical Equipment, servicing, servicing Northeast Ohio since 1933, featuring many home care-related products like scooters, lift chairs, bath safety products, walkers, oxygen supplies, and more. Their experienced billing experts are on hand to answer your questions regarding qualification and eligibility for Medicare or insurance reimbursements. Competitive pricing and same-day service. Stop in and look in the showroom on 24820 Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid. We'll set the starting lineups after this play as Doug Snyder, the senior quarterback, brings the Warriors to the line. And it's Isaiah Shepard, the tailback, not Woolridge. Woolridge still hampered by the ankle. Shepard takes it straight ahead for about five. And let's go to look at that Walsh Jesuit starting offense. I mentioned Snyder, the senior quarterback, thrown for 1,600 yards, 17 touchdowns, five interceptions. Behind him, it'll be apparently Woolridge and Shepard, a split of the two. Budney, the fullback, the wides, Connor McAvack and Mike Chambers. Across the line, Bash, Riley, Biggie, Yanko, and Shepis, the Cougar defense coming after this. Second down. Shepard trying to get the corner and wrench down near the first down marker. Let's get a look at that Cougar offense, or the Cougar defense, beg your pardon. Spehar, Giro, and Sipkis on the line. It's Katani, Timachek, Boone, and Luzo, the linebackers. Behind them, Petrozello and Howard, the corners, Jaronovic and Latkovic are the safeties. Tonight's starting lineups were brought to you by Mama Roberto's, authentic Italian restaurant in Menor, the home of the Pizza King, an official restaurant of the Comcast Game of the Week. Rick and Renee feed the Comcast football staff, try their pasta, pizza, calzones, oh and house specialties, chicken and veal. Should have seen Chimo on the meatball oh sandwiches tonight. Rick's got the best cannolis in Greater Cleveland. Jeff Morgani can certainly attest to that. It's director Steve Sherman had to help finish Jeff with his. Mama Roberto's offers full catering and delivery. Good food and plenty of it with the largest portions in Lake County. Mama Roberto's at 86, 58, Menor Avenue. And you see Walsh Jesuit there. Shepard off a left tackle on that play. Mark, going back to the opening kickoff here, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, Ashby it's similar the to the start of the week five game. Jerry Reardon not too pleased. They started themselves off in a hole on their first drive, fumbled it, returned for a touchdown, dug themselves deep in the hole, starting back here inside their 10-yard line. Same thing almost. Snyder with three receivers up top. And now we've got a flag. Snyder had a long pause there. And Budney was behind him as a sole setback and they waited too long. False start, move it back five. Looked like it might have been delay a game, but it was a false start. All right. So second and about 13. Mark, it looked like Brendan Boone, the outside linebacker, was coming in threatening to blitz. Got somebody in the offensive line there to flinch for Walsh. Ball start call. So second and long now. They go two receivers up top, one in the backfield. That's Shepard. And Snyder to throw. Zips it out, nearly intercepted. He wanted his leading receiver, Mike Chambers, but it was almost picked off. Mark Chambers had two, three steps on the cornerback, but the ball thrown way, way behind him. Just an awful throw by Doug Snyder. You look at it here, it looked like he was throwing to the Cougar. Yeah, that, I believe that was Latkovic roaming around there. Chambers had Latkovic beat from the start, but he had to stop and come back to the football. Warriors dodge a bullet there. So third and long. They need to get to about the about 31. Offset eye. Delayed handoff, Shepard 
had a hole and it closed in a hurry. He will be ridden out of bounds. Eric Catani just grabbed the saddle and wouldn't let go. Mark, just an idea of what Mike Chambers does as far as defensive schemes. He went in motion on that particular play. As we take a look at the replay, Katani forcing his man out of bounds, just grabbed him, wrapped him, and wouldn't let go. Yep. Chambers went in motion on that play. You saw two guys on the defense adjusting to that, Mark. As Mike Ashby calling out the defensive signals, he went drop back to a safety position in the corner on the left-hand side, then went to pick up Chambers after he got out of the motion. Howard and Perneski re to receive the punt. They both let it drop. And it will just be down 34-yard line. Usually, you get a play like that, it pins you deep. But 34-yard line, because they had already uh, held Walsh fairly deep in their own territory, still not bad field position for the Cougars. Could have been better as we take a look at their starting offense, led by the junior quarterback, Ricky Stanzi, last week's Comcast player of the game in their win over Hubbard. Katani behind him. And you also see a little bit of Pruneski. Burke Howard, Steve Latkovic, and Vince Petrozello in at wideout. Across the line, Cohn, Steck, Clements, Stevenson, and Barry. Check out the Warrior defense after this play. Empty backfield, though, here for Stanzi, and now they'll flip it around. You see Spehar there at tight end. They don't use him there often. But when they do go to a tight end, you will see him. Now it's an eye formation. Stanzi rolls. Caught. And there's Spehar. First down. They hardly ever, he had four receptions in the regular season. First play of the game, they go right to number 98. Let's check the Warrior defense. They run the 4-4. Across the line, Dustin Bash, Anthony Sharapa, as we get a second look here. Perfect. Kept the feet inbounds. Good timing on the pattern. Yankee and Gomer to finish the defensive line. Linebackers are Rella, Netling, McGrady, and Bennett. Behind him, Shepard, Chambers, and Mackett. Handoff for the Cougars. They'll pick up about seven, hard charging. Eric Katani, no stranger to tough yardage. Now you see that Warrior defense. Dustin Bash up top, his older brother plays for the Akron Zips. He is a tough, a lot of bashes have come through Walsh Jesuit football. Second and three. Stanzi looks to the sideline to finish off the call. He's got a back at each hip there. It's two receivers to the bottom of your screen. And they'll stick with the tight end up top. It's Katani. Powers his way for the first down. Down to the 36 of Walsh. Mark, we've only seen a few plays by this Cougar offense, but a nice mix of running pass. And spray. Starting out with the pass of the tight end, Mike Bell's offense usually doesn't revolve around the tight ends. And actually, if you're a defensive coach and you see tight ends come in for the Cougars, you're thinking run the whole time. So a little bit of misdirection by Mike Bell to start the game for the Cougars. Let's go down to the field for the first time tonight, Jeff Morgani. Well, adding to that formation as well, you're going to keep two backs flanked to uh, Stanzi's each of his sides because of how quick around the edges this Walsh defense is. You want some protection so you allow Stanzi to be able to hit his receivers. Back up top. Thanks, Jeff. And this whole drive, they've kept the tight end. They'll usually go three wides. Keep the tight end on the sideline. Stanzi to throw. Deep. Scott Latkovic. He just overthrew him. Beat his man. Jake Mackin had a step, but they couldn't hook up. I think Latkovic there, Mark, knew that the ball was going to be overthrown. Tried to draw some contact. I just saw him take a step back. Look right here. It looks like he might have gotten a little bit as he was falling forward, trying to maybe say, that, hey, I got pushed. He had separation, though. So it's second and 10 for Lake. We are scoreless first quarter in Twinsburg. Hand off. Nothing. Maybe a couple. Perneski took it. He's second and about eight, or it should be, should be third and eight. Mark, I was watching Ricky Stanzi warm up before the game. He seems like the, the temperature out there is affecting him a bit as far as he, he'll be blowing on his hands all game long. He can't really blow on his hands throwing, trying to get that hand warm so he get a good grip on the football. The first pass he threw was right on target, but it's going to be an issue for him tonight, keeping those hands warm, getting a good grip and finding his receiver. It is cold in Northeast Ohio. There are some of the Cougars fans uh, dressed as Santa Claus. 
a little early for that, but it's got that same chill in the air. And now a flag. Took him too long. Yeah, Mark, and if you see Ricky Stanzi walking around, checking around, he didn't know what was going on. He was looking to the sidelines for the play, looking back towards the line, looking to the sidelines for the play. They've had a, some trouble in the early going here. Second or third time that they've been wanting to change the play from the sidelines, and Ricky's been having to call audible at that time. He just couldn't get it. So third and 13. They need to get to the 26-yard line for a first down. Stanzi has time. Steps up in the pocket, fires it out, nearly picked off. Incomplete McGrody, the middle linebacker, was the closest to it. And this would be a very long field goal. They will in all likely punt it and pin it. Mark, if you take a look at that last play, four-man rush for Walsh, which means that there were seven guys in the defensive backfield. Stanzi didn't really have much of a chance. One, two, three, four maroon pants right there. And the rest of the guys there, they're all in the backfield. You see three Walsh Warriors right around the receivers over there. So playing the nickel defense for sure on that, Stanzi had to force that pass. So Dennis Vaughn, who we did not see last week until the fourth quarter, is now on on the Cougars' first drive, and he booms this one, but he got it a little too much. And it rolls into the end zone. The Warriors will take over on their own 20-yard line, second drive of the game. You know, you, you heard Coach Bell before the game in my conversation with him. He said, you know, Walsh is a team they usually blitz us and blitz us and blitz us. The last time we faced them, they didn't do that. And they have not done it really early here. Not yet, Mark. And part of it could be from that formation that Jeff Morgani was talking about is you see Stanzi back there surrounded by his backs because they're going to have tough blitz and an outside linebacker. Once he gets past that first tackle, there's going to be another back waiting to block. Give to the tailback. This might be Woolridge. And he picked up a couple. It was Woolridge. The sophomore with 765 yards on the ground, but had an injury-plagued season. Making his first touch of the night. If it's not him, it'll be Shepard, who did the duties on their first drive. Second and seven from the 23 for Walsh. It's Woolridge, and he got up to about the 25, maybe 26. It'll be third and about five. Scoreless first quarter here from Twinsburg. Regional semifinals between Lake Catholic and Walsh Jesuit. Mark, the bread and butter of this offense really is their running game. They like to run the football, like to pound the football, get themselves yards on the ground, chew up clock, hold on to the football. If they are forced to pass, Doug Snyder, a straight up, he just is a step back passer, drop back passer, doesn't like to roll out, doesn't like to go right or left. So it's gonna be very important. So if Walsh gets in passing situations, then Lake needs to get that pressure on Snyder and force him to get rid of the football. They go three wides all to the bottom of your screen. You can't see them, but they're out there, trust me. Cougars showing blitz. They come. Snyder just gets it away, and a high catch. It's pulled down by Makovac. Over the 45 to the 46-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. Connor Makovac is 11th reception of the season. Mark, just what I was talking about, about Doug Snyder, a straight drop back pass. You see him drop back right here, feels the pressure, takes one step forward, looking at his receiver all the way, finds him in single coverage. Cougar defender there took a chance, went for the ball. Petrozello had a chance, just missed getting the hand in there, and Makovac, 5'11", used every inch of it to pluck that one out of the sky, but it moves those sticks. Second first down of the game for the Warriors. Play action. He'll zip it over the middle, and it's, look what I found, intercepted! Here's Timichuk, down the sideline, trampling tacklers near the 40, just stuck the hand up and pulled it down. Mark, that play developed so fast, I think Joe Timichuk was still deciding what he was gonna do on that play. Happened to be caught in the middle of the field, saw the ball going over his head, reached up one hand, and pulled it down. As you see him right there, hey, here you go, it's mine, I'll take it. He saw the ball coming past him. Timichuk, that, Mark, that play developed so fast uh -huh. that Timichuk didn't know what he was gonna do yet. Starting to drop back into coverage, the ball came right past him. And at this point, he's the ball carrier. He is the fullback for the Cougars, so 
He's no stranger to breaking tackles. Look out his of coach right there, it's Mike Bell. Jeff Morgani, how did that look to you? It looked nice if you're a Lake Catholic fan. I'll tell you what, Joey T read that thing well. I mean, you read the uh, read the eyes and shoulders of the quarterback, and you talk about the momentum builder. Lake Catholic's going to have to put some points up on the board in this situation. Back up top. Katani tests the middle of the line and picks up about three. Snyder came into tonight with 17 touchdowns to only five interceptions, and he's picked off here in the first quarter. Mark Jeff Morgani mentioned the key. Lake Catholic has to capitalize on this turnover, put some points on the board. In order to do that, they're going to have to do what they did last week, and that's effectively mix the run and the pass. Ricky Stanzi, plenty of time to throw the football last week. He was able to throw a ball long downfield, 15, 20 yards at a clip, and then they would follow that up with a Katani run. They have to do the same thing right here. Four wides, three up top, one at the bottom of your screen. Stanzi floats at Ashby, wide receiver screen. Making moves towards the sideline, and he gets it to about the 32-yard line. Looks like he might have enough for the first down. He will, will move the chains. Mark Ashby knew exactly where he had to go. He went right on that sidelines, right down here. If you see him at the end of his run, he'll step outside right after the first down. Mark, he was looking at it all the way here. As he makes a quick lap, sees that he has a first down, and then just lowers the shoulder and goes. So Lake Catholic knocking on the door here, looking for the first points of the game down to the Walsh 27. And it was a Warrior turnover that gave the Cougars a short field, gave them a touchdown in their first meeting of the year. This one, not quite as short as that field they had as Timichuk pounds ahead for a yard, but still a, uh, a shorter field, certainly set up by the return. They only had about 40 yards to go, and right now they're, they've chewed about half of that up. You see the Cougar offense marked by their play calling already respect the speed of this Walsh defense as they have not run too many running plays to the outside. They don't want to run a lot of sweeps. Their linebacker is just too fast for that of the Warriors. They're going to be able to seal off those corners. Look for more running between the tackles. Second and eight, Stanzi again, a little bit of a delay there getting the play in. They'll throw. Caught Burke Howard, lost the football. Still on the ground. Cougars said they have it. Burke Howard got it back. Oh, did the Cougars get a break there because that ball looked like it should have been just eaten alive by Dustin Bash. And what a hit he took, Mark. I'm surprised that this was considered a fumble. You see him, he had possession there. Was it long enough, though? He caught the football, brought it down, then got hit. The ball went flying. Burke Howard, nice presence of mind to follow that football though, and stay with the play. That's, and John McGrady, it wasn't Bash, it was McGrady, had the best opportunity of this ball. And, you know, they say they get that, that they call it that magic bean. Oh, when it, it bounces, bounces around like that, it's... You gotta love that shape. So after all that, third and two from the 19th. Cougars will go from the eye. Katani got the first down and more, powering ahead to the 10 yard line. Mark, we talked a little bit about this last week. This is what the key is that makes Eric Katani such an effective back, is that he always keeps his legs moving. Whether it be once he gets hit, he keeps the legs moving. Another thing he likes to do, he did on that particular play, he'll spin away from the tackler and try to keep going. Now, will it be first and 10 or first and goal? It will be first and 10. So they can get a first down before getting a touchdown. If they get to about the half yard line. Play action, Stanzi has all day. Touchdown, Latkovic! There's nothing fancy. Fake the handoff, roll out, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Steve got a step and Stanzi got him the ball. And Steve's had his man beat all night long as you see him right there. Again, another two or three steps. Yep. You see the amount of space in between the defender and Lakovic there. Mack and again, the same guy he victimized on the deep ball. Perfect throw by Stanzi, throwing on the run to the right side where he's comfortable. And Lakovic got away from his man yet again. Coach, I know Coach Mike Bell saw that on the first play where they went deep to lack a bit earlier and he had his man beat. Don't think that Coach Mike Bell forgot that. He went right back to it. Muscana, right after, it's good. Seven to nothing, Cougars take the early lead. And as Jeff Morgani mentioned, There's Martin, Santa. 
key right here, and Lake Catholic did exactly that. They converted turnovers into points. When you go to the playoffs, it's the same thing every year, whether it's the high school state championship or the Super Bowl. Don't make mistakes, and if you happen to be the beneficiary of a mistake, Better take, take the most out of that opportunity. It's exactly what the Cougars did. Let's go to the sideline, Jeff Morganti. I thought we were going to go to Jeff. I hate that. But uh, how about the importance and uh, the discipline of Ladkovic, uh, you know, finding pressure in the end zone and knowing on that rollout situation he had to get separation from his defender and did so. I and mean, your smarter receivers are going to have to do that, especially when there's you know, oncoming pressure coming from both sides and up the gut knowing that your quarterback's got to get rid of the football allowing separation getting away and finding uh, an open seam in the corner of the end zone just like Lackalick did back up top the Walsh Warriors like to have these kickoffs go to Mike Chambers last time the Cougars stayed away from him they try to do that here. This will just bounce and get out of bounds, and the Warriors will get nice field position. But you see them trying to kick it to Rella or Shepard, the two up men, because they want to keep the ball away from Chambers as much as humanly possible. And right here is one of the benefits of having someone like Mike Chambers back there, Mark, is that you try to kick away from him, and of course it goofs up, goofs up your game maybe a little bit, the ball's going to go out of bounds, and you're going to get good field position out of it to start the, the drive. So it'll be first and 10 at the 35 for the Warriors. Not bad. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Jerry Ryden comes up with is in their first few drives of the Warriors, Mark, they've been trying to establish a run, run that football with both Woolridge and Shepard, but now down a touchdown, and because of an interception, will he be afraid to throw the football or will he go back to the run? Well, I gotta believe with Snyder, the senior quarterback, and now 17 touchdowns to six interceptions. He's still going to feel the kid knows what he's doing. They'll pass it here. And it's caught by Makovac, his second grab of the game for about five yards. That time Woolridge was in a tailback, and maybe they just gave him the first series off. You need to watch the entire field on the defensive side. When, when, when Walsh goes to throw a pass, Mark, just take a look. See, you can actually tell without even having to look at a specific number where Mike Chambers is on that field because you'll see three or four green jerseys heading that way, which leaves the other receivers like Makovec in one-on-one -on -one cover. Second and five for Walsh Jesuit. They trail five zip, or seven zip. Woolridge has space and dragged down just short of the 50 yard line. He was about one broken tackle away from running for a very long time. As it is, he picked up the first down. Very dangerous weapon Mark Woolridge is. Coach Mike Bell talked a lot about Mike Chambers and how he was worried about facing him as far on the receiving and the football, but he, Remember, Lake Catholic has never faced Mark Woolridge. He was hurt during week five. He was the team's leading rusher, but an injury kept him out of week five, so they don't really know what to expect from this kid. 5'9", sophomore, weighs 170. And he'll get it here. Trying to get the corner. Cut back and couldn't find a hole. Nice rip down by Sipkis, the defensive end. He was the first of many green shirts around. And defensively last week, Mark, that's one of the keys that Lake Catholic did so well last week in the 42-14 blowout of Hubbard. Remember, Hubbard had a running back 1,350 yards, 14 touchdowns on the ground, but Lake Catholic able to seal off the outside. They had trouble running the football outside all night long. Credit the speed of the Lake Catholic defense getting over there, sealing off those corners. Gained maybe a half yard on the play. Here comes the blitz. Snyder has some time. Shoots it, caught first down. Chambers, first reception of the night. Gets it to about the 34, and they are into Cougar territory. Walsh Warriors, Mark, expecting the blitz, as you saw, because Snyder rolling out all the way from the start. He's normally a drop back passer, but he was rolling out. This was a design play to Mike Chambers, because you got to think, once the blitz comes, then you're going to see Mike Chambers probably in some one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's exactly what you want. You only can hope to pick up the blitz or roll away from it. That's exactly what the Warriors did. 
one-on-one -on -one there with Latkovic. We are under a minute and a half to play first quarter. Cougars lead seven to nothing. Walsh trying to answer after the lake just went up. It's Shepard. Right tackle for a few. You gotta believe they're gonna, if they're gonna run, they're gonna run right behind their right guard, Nick Yanko. 6'2", 305 pounds. That's a big piece of beef. And that's where we've already seen about 75 to 80% of the running plays will be behind that right tackle, both from Woolridge and Shepard. Second and eight, they gave him two. That's Makovac in motion. Just hard charge running by Trey Bennett. One of the backup running backs. He has 20 carries for 133 yards on the season, so not a ton of touches. Did score four touchdowns. You'll see him, sometimes Dave Rella, come in off the bench. But usually if they're gonna go one, two at tailback, it'll be Woolridge and Shepard. Looks like they're gonna measure this one for a first down as the officials calling the sticks over. Up here in the booth, they're saying that Walsh has it. They stretch out the chains. We'll go downstairs to Jeff Morganic. Then he is, but he's got good instincts. It's been timed at a 4-4 in a 40 so the contrast the running backs and of course you just saw the last one right there back up top they did pick up the first and they'll run Trey again and he gets goes off that right side and Bennett grabs a couple Mark, so far the Warriors put together a very effective drive as we finish up the first quarter here three two one to go but Mark coming back from the interception and the touchdown by Lake Catholic Walsh went right to work immediately a nice mixture again of the run and the pass and they have been slowly wearing this Lake Catholic defense down as they move now. Looks like pretty much close to the 20 yard line of the yeah. Cougars. Well, I mean, that's balance. And you need when you get to the playoffs, you're usually going to run into teams like balance. That's why sometimes when Chardon goes, makes a deep run in the playoffs, people get surprised because they're a team that is not balanced. They probably never will be balanced. And that's, you know, that's, the right, that's what they like to do there, run the ball. But, you know, you get into, you know, here, you, Doug Snyder throws for 1,600 yards. You know, Woolridge runs for almost 800. Shepard runs for almost 500. Chambers is one of the better wideouts in the area. Um, you know, you got guys that can do some things. And look what we saw last week in Hubbard. Their, their stats were ridiculous. They were ridiculous, but you know what, Walls, exactly what Lake Catholic did last week, scoring on their first six possessions, but they had a balanced attack. They started out with Ricky Stanzi throwing the football, then let Katani run it, kept the defense on its heels all night long. Walsh doing the same on this drive. So they will flip the field. Second and maybe seven. Let you know tonight's second quarter brought to you by Bank One of Mentor. You can visit any of our Mentor locations. Mentor Shore on Andrews Road, Great Lakes Mall, or Town Square next to Luchita's Restaurant off Mentor Avenue. Stop in and ask for the branch manager and receive a free gift when you open a one checking account with direct deposit. Good luck to the Cougars from the Bank One branches of Mentor. And you see the run by Trey Bennett got him close to be about third and four. I'll tell you, tonight's second quarter also brought to you by MK Photography, Portrait Studio, Frame Center, and Photo Lab. Whether you have an upcoming wedding, a high school senior, or in need of a family photo for the holidays, don't miss the opportunity to have MK Photography capture that special moment. Their knowledgeable staff, award-winning photography, and personal touch will definitely make your next photography experience satisfying. Stop by their studio at 9570 Mentor Avenue, just a quarter mile east of Heisley Road. Let them show you how they strive to be number one. Check them out online also at www.mkphotostudio.com. And a first down for Walsh there. As they continue this long march to try to tie this game here in the first quarter. One can only wonder what Mike Bell told his Cougar defense and the little rest period between quarters 
because right now, again, Walsh effectively moving the football. It looks like the Cougar defense getting blown off the line of scrimmage is the offensive line of Walsh really opening up some holes for their runners. I'll get a first and 10 from the 10, almost the exact same spot the Cougars were in when they could get a first down without a touchdown. It's Bennett again, hammering his way to about the five yard line. Six foot, 195. Then they'll go for 6'1", 205. Those are two br pretty big guys to have on the bench. Woolridge, as we mentioned earlier, 5'9", 170, a little smaller. They have yet to hand it to the fullback, Rob Budney, who is 6'1", 235. In a situation like this, Mark, is where you need to keep an eye on Mike Chambers because Lake Catholic's going to squeeze the field now. They're going to start putting more men on the line of scrimmage in this goal line situation, which is going to leave Mike Chambers in one-on-one -on -one coverage, most likely. So if Snyder drops back, look for Chambers. Chambers is up top. And you wonder if they're going to get a play action here sooner or later. Nope, they'll give it to Bennett. And he is ripped down by three green shirts. Spehar was there, Timachuk, Katani, all to greet him. There's Brendan Boone helping finish off the play. Jeff Morganti on the sidelines. Talking to Jerry Reardon, told me earlier in the week that uh, he thought he could have done a better job play calling when they were inside the red zone, in fact, inside the goal line, rather than uh, running the football. He probably should have thrown it back up top. Well, now they're in a situation you'd think they're going to throw, third and six, really from about the six and a half, and now Coach Reardon wants to think about it. You wonder here what they go, you, you try the play action, try to get Chambers one-on-one, -on -one, as you mentioned. He's 6'1", he can get up there. With all the weapons that Walsh has at their disposal right now, especially now with Woolridge back and playing, and Shepard both in the game, Mark, this, it, this is a very important play right here because it's a difference between, this could be a four point difference between a field goal and a touchdown and extra point here, Mark. If Lake Catholic can get the stop here, here's what you gotta do. You gotta keep an eye on Mike Chambers, but you also gotta keep enough people on the line to stop Chamber, or I'm sorry, Shepard and Woolridge if they're gonna come through that line. Or Bennett lately. Yeah. Watch the play action too, but I think you gotta have more than one guy on Mike Chambers and you gotta get on him right at the line of scrimmage. You can't wait for him to come to you at the goal line. You have to get right on top of him. Let's go downstairs, Jeff Morganti. Scott O'Donnell uh, huddling the troops, and Jason, if we can get a pan out to this goal line defense if we can. Scott O'Donnell telling the troops, watch the draw, watch anything quick, watch the quarterback. Back up top. Snyder has three running touchdowns on the season. They'll go one in the backfield. It is the fullback, Budney. Chambers. And Snyder's gonna throw. Flag on the field, wanted Chambers. He was wide open, couldn't hang on. It was off his fingertips, but let's see what the laundry's about. Mark, it looked like that ball was tipped to Snyder because he threw off his back foot, and it looked like the ball might have changed direction. Right there, throwing there, and did the lineman get a hand on that? Ooh, very wobbly pass. False start against Walsh. Mark, if you look so the at play the play, really, the play then never happened. And if you, if you look at the play that Walsh ran to get Chambers, they lined up Chambers in the slot, two receivers out to his left, both of those receivers crossed over, took the defense with him, and Chambers was all alone to run a little pattern out to the left side of the end zone. And actually, the penalty here does the Warriors a favor because technically the play never happened because it was the false start. So it's not like it was a situation where the Cougars can decline the penalty. They'll go three wides. Chambers is off your screen to the bottom. Cougars showing blitz again. Here they come. Timachuk in hot pursuit. Spehar dived and missed him. Snyder's going back across the field. Chambers incomplete. Oh, he's close. I think he trapped it. I don't know how Snyder survived back there. He had green shirts on him in a hurry, and Doug did a great job of buying himself time. And then he just laid the throw in, I think, a little bit short. Snyder rolled out here, was just a foot race, got himself some time. You see Timachuk there, kind of like, wait, what am I doing here? Yep, you see Latkovic fell down, and ooh. Oh, boy. They may have caught a break. They might have caught a break. In a fact, break I'm going to go sure. ahead and say they, they might not have, because they did catch a break. Field goal. It's Matt DeMarchi. Splits the upright, seven to three, Lake Catholic on top, and they should feel fortunate because from what we saw that replay, it looked like Chambers' 15th touchdown of the season. 
And Mark, that play was just a testament to what they say to you in football, always follow your man through the play until the play is over. Right there, a broken play, Snyder forced to roll out, and of course the first person he looks to when he gets in trouble is Mike Chambers. He threw the ball all the way back across the yep. field, but the defense looked like they had given up once well, they I saw think, the play develop by the right time. I think what happened, if you looked to, to the left of Chambers, Latkovic had fallen down, and I, at, at that point, as we see the throw here, Got his hands underneath. Ooh, that's close. That's close. Mark, I think what threw the officials off. Of the... I think what threw the officials off. We can get another look at it. Is Chambers got his hands underneath? The ball bounced off of his hands right. up to his that's chest. A... They figured it hit the ground. That's cool. that's a tough call on the officials, but it looked like from replay that he reeled it in. Uh, to go back to the coverage, I, it was probably one of those situations. Obviously, at that point, the play's broken down, and guys are just running all over the place. Chambers probably made a cut, and Latkovic. That's where he tried to cut and slip because he clearly had, had slipped trying to make a move, and that's how Chambers got open. And Chambers did exactly what you're supposed to do if your receiver and your quarterback is in trouble. Just drop everything in your route and go straight to the football. Get over towards that quarterback. Get open. Kickoff goes to, it'll be Vidmar. He's at the 10, straight ahead. Vidmar just in a pile, was pounded a few times and dropped at about the 28 yard line. So on comes Stanzi and company. Boy, you hope for the Sega, you know, that, that's one of those, you, you almost hope that does not come back to factor into the game because you'd hate to see a bad call to side something. It's still early on though, it's seven to three here early second quarter. But and also, if you look at the positioning of the officials on the field in that mark, there was a, <coughs> excuse me, there was a guy that was behind Chambers, one of the officials. Another one, the side judge over on the end zone side, he was all the way across the field making the call. I think he's the one that saw the ball bounce off of his hands yeah. and figured it bounced on the ground. Stanzi from the shotgun's got two receivers to his left off the bottom of your screen there. Play action, he's gonna run it. And Stanzi almost broke it for a big one, but he got it out to the 32 before being dropped by Dustin Bash. That's a, a play they went to really in the second half last week against Hubbard. We didn't see much of it early. No, you didn't, but it became an effective play for Lake when they needed a first down to keep the ball rolling and keep the clock moving last week against Hubbard. Ricky Stanzi, people tend to forget about him, you know, with Proneski and Katani back there, but you'll see a lot of quarterback draws called by Mike Bell if it's working well. He can run it. Had over almost 500 yards on the regular season. Burke Howard there in motion. Stanzi has time. He'll step up. Caught. It's Howard. 40-yard line looking for more. To the 45. First down, Cougars. Nice bit of play, play calling there, Mark. That was a designed play as Burke Howard took off. Looked like he was going to run a straight fly pattern. And even Stanzi sold the figures. You look, it looks like he cocks his arm like he's going to throw deep and then just kind of puts it back to the side as, as Howard came back in front of the receivers. He had all the defenders, I'm sorry, going backwards, thinking that he was going deep. He came back, was wide open for the football. Can't get much more open than that. And he makes a little move here, gets about four or five extra yards out of it. Stanzi also does have a little bit of a natural sidearm. It's more like three quarters, really, but he'll drop it down. Katani breaks tackles. Here's Eric in the open field. Katani, nobody will catch him. Touchdown, Cougars. Mark, that's classic Eric Katani, if you can even say that about him, but this is the kind of player that he is. When he gets the initial contact, he never gives up. He keeps the legs moving. He keeps his feet moving. Stop right there. Yep. All he does, Breaks he's an arm still tackle. moving, pushes an arm out, cuts it out to the left side. A lot of times in that situation, you'll see him spin away from the tackler. That time, he just stiff-armed him and moved out to the left side. Became a foot race. He outran the defense. And check out Mike Chambers there at the tail end. He got blocked early on in the play. He had to have been, I don't know, 9, 10 yards behind them. He almost came back to make the tackle. But what running by Katani, we talk about every time we see him, I mean, everything he does is just energy. You know, with defense, whether it's blocking, whether it's running the football, he is just a ball of energy. And, is, you, you know, you keep those legs pumping as he always does, and he can be a real witch on a defense. And that's the key. And, uh, you know, if you're a running back coach, 
I would mind showing videos of Eric Catani and how this is done. You look at people who have made a living at that, I think of Walter Payton, I think of Emmett Smith, I think of people like Jim Brown. These are the guys who kept the legs moving at all times and never gave up. Catani ran for 14 touchdowns during the regular season. Mm -mm -mm. To the sidelines, Jeff Morganti. Well, Scott O'Donnell just had the defense huddled around him and said, hey guys, we made a nice defensive stand, okay, but they beat our butts across the line of scrimmage. We allowed them to march down the field on us to put ourselves in that situation to have that goal line stand. We don't want that. You guys are gonna have to get off blocks and make plays. But I'll tell you what, the offense certainly responded to that defensive stand. Back up top. Thanks, Jeff, and that's a good point. Now the Cougar defense, they did get marched down the field on. They've gotta come up as Burke Howard will tee this one up. And it's fumbled. Cougars trying to keep it away from Chambers. They've done it, and that time did not out of bounds as they did earlier. And the ball is recovered, but Chambers was the one that fell on it. You know, talking to Jerry Reardon before the game started, Mark, there was two things that they did in week five that cost him the ball game pretty much that he wanted to avoid this week. That was number one, turning over the football, and number two, not giving up the big play. Well, they've done both of that tonight. Lake up to a 14-3 lead. So Warriors get it first and 10 on their own 28. They'll run it, it's Woolrich, tries the right sideline and pushed out about the 35. As you wonder, where was he on the first series? Because you thought, well, all right, he's not out there and he's still having problems with the ankle. He's played every series since Well, then. I think that, that now, especially when you look at the scoreboard, they're going to need him to spark plug this offense. But talking even more about Eric Catani, who just made the play on that one, he was facing the pulling guard. Will Riley was the pulling guard on that sweep play. 240 pounds against Eric Catani. Catani held him up, forced the play to the outside, and forced it out of bounds. That's Makovac in motion. They'll give Woolrich, and he is ripped down, maybe a yard. Defense was in hot pursuit. Bob Steck initiated. Right there, yet another effect of what a big play does as far as momentum-wise to a football team. The defense playing, looks like I got an extra pump in their step now as they were really tracking that play down. Followed Shepard all the way, would not let him get around the corner. Third and five for yeah, the Warriors. Looks like a short five, almost four. They'll go two receivers to the bottom of your screen. And they'll run it. And they're going to get the first down. Shepard took it, the handoff, and just found a huge hole off the right side of the line. Well, that's twice now that Walsh has split out receivers way out, Mike Chambers being the guy on the very end. What that does is spreads the defense out because Lake wants an extra man to be around Mike Chambers at all times. That spread the defense out. It opened it up between the tackles, took a linebacker away, and that's exactly where the runner went. Same formation here. Yep. Snyder will roll it. Pump fake. Has some time, wants it all. He's got Chambers fingertip grab down near the 15. Nice catch by Mike Chambers. Mark, if you had followed Chambers on that play, he was covered one on one for a while. And then the safety joined the defender. Right at the very end, Chambers made a cut to the inside. And then found himself beaten by a step. Yep. Snyder's pump fake was pretty much what did it as far as getting Chambers out in the open. Well, and he was on Jaranovic, the safety. Dave, a sophomore safety, isn't... I don't know, you put him one-on-one -on -one against one of the better receivers in the area, or he ends up one-on-one -on -one in that case. And Chambers will usually win that battle. Shepard. Takes it to the 15. But Mark, Mike Chambers is the kind of player that no matter what is happening on the field, you want to keep your eye on him at all times. And so far, Lake has not done that good of a job in what could have been a, a touchdown catch earlier, 
and on that particular play. Looked like a broken play. Snyder in some trouble, getting pressure, pump fake. The defenders went away from Chambers, left him wide. Chambers is up top of your screen there. It's Ashby, looks like, on top of him. And Budney, the fullback, drifts in motion. Shepard, big hole. Shepard to the goal line, is he in? Touchdown, Walsh. Well, you knew they were where they were going, and as soon as Rob Budney just took a couple of shuffle steps to the left. Mark, all kinds of credit has to go to this Walsh offense. That's twice now that they've had to come in with the football after a big play or a touchdown by Lake Catholic, and they've come right back and marched all the way down the field two times in a row and scored both times, albeit one was a field goal. Uh, and that's exactly what the Cougar defense was talking about on the sideline, uh, you know, uh, from Jeff's report. That they said, you guys are getting pushed off that line. You gotta, you gotta get off those blocks. You gotta shred those blocks. You gotta make plays. That didn't happen on that drive either. Extra point up and in. It is 14 to 10. Lake Catholic on top. Under six minutes to play in the first half. And after a couple of three and outs by both offenses, all of a sudden neither defense can get off the field. Uh, and Jerry Raritan's been waiting for this game the whole season long to have Shepard and Woolridge in there at the same time. Both of them have proven their medal throughout the season. And to have two backs of that caliber, you keep the Lake defense guessing. They got to keep an eye on Chambers. Now they got to keep an eye on these two. As we mentioned in the pregame show, Walsh has plenty of weapons for tonight's game. Well, Shepard on that score from 48 yards now on the night. That was a 16 yard run. Well, let's talk about what the Cougars can do here, Mark. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. They got the four point lead right now. 5.46 to go. If they can make a sustained drive here, take the ball, punch it in for either three or seven points, go into the halftime with the momentum of the score, and they're gonna get the football yeah. back, that could be key. That's where you try to get the two for one. But the Walsh defense, I have a feeling, is gonna wanna say something about that. We'll see if they respond, although the Cougars have scored two straight touchdowns. DeMarchi to kick it off. An end over ender. And it's gonna be Burke Howard. Burke Howard's got a hole! 50, 45, smack down at the 41 yard line. As soon as you said Burke Howard, I was about to say he's dangerous, keep an eye on him, and there he was. He found that seam, went up the sidelines, got Lake phenomenal field position over midfield. Now it's gonna be up to the offense here. Take a look here, Howard grabs the football, Goes immediately to the left. Cuts it inside. Then the second gear comes out as he yep. goes to the outside. And there's two types of kickers. Some, some kick returns are set up by a phenomenal athletic play. Other types, you credit just about everyone but the guy running the ball. That was the case there, because he just had some incredible space to run through, opened up by his blockers. First and 10 from the 46 of the Walsh Jesuit Warriors. Stands it all day. Flags fly, and it's caught for a, no, he was out of bounds. Well, they might get Dan Barry for a hold here. Yep, it will be a hold. As Stanzi was rolling out, Barry following the play, locked a man in the back. Now here's the interesting thing, Mark, if they do it from the spot of the foul, you're gonna be looking at like a first and like 24, 25. Oh, and that's the case, because the guy with the dial down just walked about a mile. The line of scrimmage was the 46 of Walsh. The Cougars now have it about the 40 of their own. The ball might be scratching the 41. So it's first and about 23. Double pass. Catani will bounce it outside and only got a couple. Now they call that one, the, you always hear it called the safest pass in the game. It's as good as a lateral or a delayed handoff, but if you drop it, it's no fumble because it goes forward. But if you, if you take a look at Catani on that particular play, Mark, as soon as he got the football, he was swarmed. I mean, after what he did to Walsh on the last possession, they are definitely gonna be keeping his eye, their, their eyes on him tonight. 
And as soon as he got that football, there was five players right in his face. Keep in mind, they're in this hole because of a holding penalty. One of the things Mike Bell was disappointed about last week against Hubbard, they had several holding penalties. It didn't show up in the final score, but it really made some drives harder on him. Stanzi will step up. He's under pressure and sack. Had time, and then the pocket just kind of dissolved. Well, I like to call that, and a lot of people say it's a coverage sack because you're right, Mark. He did have the time. Dustin Bash. As he went back, the pocket collapsed around him. He stepped forward like a quarterback should, but he had nobody downfield to throw to. Nice coverage by the Walsh defensive secondary. Third and a light year. Right now is the kind of time where you look for a quarterback draw, something like that, just to get him some yards back. Maybe the punt will push Walsh deep into their territory. They're on their own 39. They need to get to the Walsh 36. And they're going to hoist it. Stanzi steps up. Overthrew Ashby, who would have turned it upfield for a nice gain. I don't know if he would have got the first down. He had a chance at it. Well, he, he, if he had held out of that football, he would have caught it right with about maybe 10 or 12 yards to go. So he did have a shot to turn it upfield had he gotten that football. But I don't know about that choice of play calling, Mark. I mean, it looked like they were doing the right thing. They were going for maybe half of what of the yardage they needed. I like. I mean, if he if the ball's reeled in, they got a chance at a first down. Because there was a defender down from Ashby, but uh, he also had a blocker down there. Instead, they will punt it and a, and a drive thwarted by a holding penalty. Chambers takes it near the 30. Breaking tackles. Mike Chambers to the 47. And all of a sudden, now the momentum shifts to the Walsh Warriors, Mark. Yep. Three and a half minutes to go, plenty of time. And look where they are. They only have to go under 55 yards. We're going to go to the sideline. Jeff Morganti standing by. Well, again, guys, uh, Scott O'Donnell, the defensive coordinator for the Cougars, had the troops over to the side and told the linebackers specifically, guys, you're going to have to get off the blocks from those linemen that are scraping and coming out and hitting you. But the guys down, down on front have to get to the quarterback. More pressure on the quarterback. Forget about the last two drives. Come back. we got to put pressure on the quarterbacks. But linebackers get off the blocks. Back up top. Snyder will roll out. Looks incomplete. One at Chambers, but underthrew him by about five yards. Mark, what Jeff was talking about so far, actually I've only seen one of the linebackers doing that. That's Eric Catani. He's doing a nice job of punching his blocks, getting off of them, and making the play, either forcing it to the outside or making the tackle as the ball comes at him. Some of the other linebackers having some trouble as their defensive front being blown off the line of scrimmage. These linebackers are having to take on guards and tackles now who have moved downfield. Second and 10, 14 to 10. Lake Catholic leads 3.31 to play in the first half from Twinsburg, Ohio in the regional semifinals. Snyder, jailbreak screen. Shepard, did he catch that? No, they'll say he trapped it. Did he say catch it or they guess his knee was down? You could almost call it either. Although I don't think he caught it, Mark. It looked like he reached down to the ground and picked it up. No, they'll say his knee was down, so. It'll be back at the 43-yard yeah. line. If they call it an incomplete pass, that's actually good for the Warriors. If they say that he caught it, that's a loss. It's a loss, and it keeps the clock moving. And there it is. It's a loss. Third Although 13. The, oh, now the clock's going. But, Mark, that's twice now we've seen. You force Doug Snyder to throw under pressure, he's going to make a bad throw. They need to get more pressure on the quarterback. Makovac in motion. The blitz. And he'll get about, well, got some, but about five yards short of the first down. And Snyder just had to tuck and run. Mark Joe Timichuk, the middle linebacker, came on a blitz, gambled on what side the play, unfortunately, went away from him. So that's one of those things where sometimes you want to call a run on a long play. You'll see a blitz coming, and if you can get past that first wave of tacklers, you've got all kinds of room to run. And we are under the three-minute mark in the first half. A timeout now called by Walsh. They have one remaining. Lake with the full complement. So they're going to get the ball back with 2.38 and three timeouts. Well, and again, we talked about it before when Lake started their last drive is one of the things you got to think about now. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. 
They have a four point lead right now. If this punt were to go back deep in their territory and they're driven, what do you want to do? Do you want to run the football? Say, okay, you know what, we'll see in the second half. Or do you want to try to get a drive out of this and move the football effectively? Some decisions that Mike Bell's going to have to make. I think you try to get after it. I mean, when you got 238, remember clock stops on a first down and you got three timeouts. I mean, and normally you would, but what happened? Ricky Stanzi, last drive, sacked once, pressured a couple yeah. of times. So when he's been dropping back to pass, all of a sudden now, he's not having all the time that he had earlier in the game to throw the football. So Bob Simone will boot it away for the Warriors. Ashby and Howard back to receive it for Lake Catholic. And this will be Howard. Had a big kick return moments ago. Not quite the same result here, dropped the 23. Here it is, decision time. You have 77 yards to go to pay dirt, two and a half minutes, two timeouts, or is it three? Three timeouts three. to work with. So what do you want to do? I think they start out by running the ball, sort of kind of sniff the air a little bit with Katani, send them off a tackle, see how many yards they can get off of that, and start moving the football. I would look for them not to start throwing the ball until they get themselves maybe one or even two first downs. They come out with three wides up top, or they could just come out throwing immediately. Pruneski, one of the backup running backs, is in a slot. Stanzi to throw. Flips it over the middle. Katani's got it. Breaking tackles. Here comes Katani again. Gets the first down out to the 36-yard line. An interesting call. Something that we haven't really seen before, Mark. Middle screen out of Lake Middle Catholic. screen, but they did exactly what you want to do, Marcus. You want to get Eric Katani the football in the open field and let him do what he does best. And that play designed specifically for that. As you see, Katani, he has the ball. And now the he broken can, tackle. And now he can start moving those legs. Does he ever go down on the first hit? I haven't seen it. Stanzi to throw. Under duress, he'll get sacked. Matt Gomer, the defensive end. That's twice now, Mark, we've seen Ricky Stanzi get sacked. I don't know what if he's looking downfield for the big play at once, but they've been effective throwing the short passes. Both times that he's been sacked, I like to think that they're coverage sacks because Walsh has been had the pressure on Stanzi, has avoided mm -hmm. it in the beginning, and then has not been able to get rid of the football and gotten caught on the second time around. That one, though, I think happened a little bit quicker than some of the other ones. I don't know how, you know, if it was quite a coverage thing. Uh, Gomer did make a great move to get off his block. Jeff Morganti on the sidelines. How'd you see it? Twavi, if you've known the last couple of weeks, though, in, in doing Lake Catholic games, not as many quick slants tonight. Uh, that last possession, Stanzi right away looked at uh, Burke Howard running a fade down the left side, and uh, that's why he took as long waiting for him to get open. And, of course, the coverage sack, the deep be there on that side covering Howard did a great job which allowed uh, the down lineman for uh, Walsh to get in there back up top thanks Jeff minute 50 to play first half now Walsh just used their last time out so they won't be able to stop anymore I'm thinking Lake here will go short pass try to pick some up keep that clock moving that or is second and 19 maybe run the football twice kick the ball away with under 30 seconds to go I mean, it's off to Mike Bell. Jeff Borgani brings up an excellent point. We have not seen those slant patterns no. that were so effective last week for the Cougars. They got the ball moving, scoring on the first six possessions. Stanzi will throw it here. It's the screen, Latkovic just blasted immediately. He might have got a yard. Going back to both sacks of Stanzi, Mark, as Jeff pointed out, it looked like he was waiting for the bomb to develop, the long play, the fly pattern. He was waiting and waiting, waiting. And when it didn't, he had nowhere to go and no one to throw to. Those are what's called coverage sacks. Empty backfield. Minute 20 ticking on the first half. Lake Catholic leads by four. There it is. Stanzi will take it himself. Thought we might see this. Ricky in open field, trying to get a corner. Slammed down at the 42, and he got out of bounds. He stops the clock by going out of bounds. That did Walsh a favor. Chambers kind of tossed him out, which obviously was part of it. But you almost he's probably thinking now, I should have just slid. Well, he talked about that earlier. It's kind of play, you see the quarterback draw when they need a third and long type play or something like that. And actually, very close to the first down. Ooh, I mean, I thought he do? was down in bounds. You see him kind of turn, he'll land on his derriere. Right, well, never mind. 
but you can say hi to Mike Staley there. <laughs> so Dennis Vaughn will boot it away. That's got to be like kicking a rock tonight. Down to the 20. Wow. He picked that up. He's that, lucky he didn't fumble yeah, it. Yeah, he was. I, I wonder what he was doing on that. Mike, Mike Chambers, Chambers trying to make a play, but you can't make a play out of that. You can only make a turnover. And it was an excellent punt, too. They kicked it away from Chambers to the far side of the field. Plenty of room for that ball to roll around in. And Chambers is hobbling. He is slow getting Chambers up. You right see him right off the right of your football. Normally, on a play like this, you see the ball. You the, the punt return is gone. He just wants to get get out of the way. Yeah, I, I don't know what he thought he could do on that play. And right there, if you take a look, it looked like his right knee. Ooh. As Vince Petrozello, the yeah. first man down to hit him, he pulled him around sideline. It looked like sideways. It looked like maybe Chambers might have injured his right knee. And he was very slow getting up. And then when he got up, he hobbled. If, if but it, you know it, that particular play, you, you just got to file it into the what were you thinking? Yeah. The other thing was the ball was about to stop rolling. I mean, it would have been downed in the area anyway. I don't know. They'll run it. Shepard for a few. And you think Walsh is just going to run out the clock now with a long field, no timeouts, and their best playmaker on the sideline. Coming up at the half, Jeff Morgani gets a look at some of the first half stats. Should be the final play of the second quarter. And they'll run to Budney. The fullback, his first touch. That's how you throw a dog a bone. Here, run the clock out. Sort of taking a back seat now that they've got both Shepard and Woolridge back. Yep. And they will let the first half clock run dry. The final five seconds will kick off. It is 14 to 10. Lake Catholic on top. I'm very curious about the status of Mike Chambers. He did not look good coming up off the field. And if he could not make it back on the field for the second half, that would be a disaster Absolutely. for the Walsh Jesuit Absolutely. offense. We will see if Jeff can catch up with Coach Mike Bell. We'll keep it here for a minute. Interested to see what Coach Bell has to say. His Cougars on top here in the first half. Let's go downstairs, Jeff Morgani. Mark and Mark, thank you very much. We're here with Coach Bell. And Coach, uh, seems like they pushed you around up front a couple times on those last couple of drives. Is that a concern? Oh, certainly. You know, we can't we can't afford the, the penalties and you know, and the, and the sack, the one sack. You know, our line gave up. Ricky should have got rid of the ball sooner in that last one. We can't have that. Mike, how about defensively? Are they throwing more looks at you, confusing you a little bit offensively or not? No, not at all. I mean, they're running the ISO, the draw, the power, the the off tackle stuff that we've been working on all week. We got to shore it up. What about uh, defensively? Are they showing you anything defensively? Anything different from the last time you played them? Uh, they showed us a little three-man front when we went to our empty. So that's something that uh, that's new. Back up top. Back up top, guys. All right, Jeff. Thanks. And that three-man front we talked about it earlier in the game, Mark is. Is, uh, it was obviously it was a third and 13 stands he dropped back to pass and there was only four people rushing for Walsh and the other seven were cover all yeah. out covering receivers. That's something a little bit different, especially with the speed of this Walsh defense. You can afford to go to man on man coverage when you're as fast as they are defensively and to drop back and see seven guys back there. And then when they go to the three man front, you got eight. And you back got there. eight guys back there. That's something different. That's something I don't think Lake expected. All right. We will step away when we come back. Jeff Morganti on the halftime show. You see it there. Cougars lead by four on the Comcast Game of the Week. Back in the regional semifinal action here with Walsh and Lake Catholic and the Cougars leading this one over the Warriors 14-10 in a rematch from the regular season back in week five. But the Cougars out in front by a four-point cushion. See how the second half shapes up. Let's give you our half stats, and they are brought to you by College Prospects of America and Representative Gary Kadow. There are hundreds of college coaches who can offer you the best educational, athletic, and financial aid opportunities, but they don't know who you are and where you are. College Prospects of America and Gary will create an academic and athletic profile, mail it directly to those coaches across the country so you can get that exposure. CPOA provides internet marketing, video enhancement services, direct fax service, and financial aid counseling. Give Gary a call, 350-1937, or visit his website, www.cpoa.com. All right, Jeff Unruh, we put those graphics up, and here they are, Walsh. 109 yards rushing for them, Isaiah Shepard, 51 yards. He's got the touchdown. 
for Lake Catholic, 88 yards rushing. Eric Catani, six rushes, 81 yards. Of course, he had the long run of over 50 yards. They gave him that touchdown in the majority of those yards. Rick Stanzi passing, 8 of 11, 70 yards, one touchdown pass. That was the Lakovic. Doug Snyder, 5 of 9 for Walsh, 77 yards. First downs favor Walsh by 3, 10 to 7. The turnovers, Walsh turning it over one time. Lake Catholic taking advantage of it, going in for a score. Penalty yards, Walsh, not very many tonight. You see one penalty for five yards. Lake Catholic, two for 18. It should be an interesting second half for a trip to the regional finals. We'll see if Lake Catholic can get back to where they were a year ago. Let's go back up to the Marks brothers. Chimo and Schwabe, back up top, guys. Thanks, Jeff. As the Cougars are on to receive the second half kickoff, from Mancini, and it's taken by one of the upbacks, a short kickoff, and they'll get it with decent field position at about the 38-yard line. Cougars lead by four. Let you know tonight's third quarter is brought to you by Dino's Restaurant and Banquet Center, conveniently located in Willoughby on Route 306 near the I-90 exit, adjacent to Lakeland Community College. Dino's features spacious dining areas, a full-service lounge, and several private rooms for catered events. But best of all, the same fine Italian-American cuisine that Dino's restaurants are known for. Arrange your special party by calling 269-8000 or drop in anytime to enjoy a casual lunch or dinner. We know you'll be back. Delicious. First and 10 for the Cougars. And Katani tries the right side and got three or four, maybe. Also, this third quarter, a service of security self-storage, the area's finest self-storage facility, offering climate-controlled storage for furniture, clothing, documents, and electronics, and regular storage for seasonal items and even outdoor storage for boats, RVs, cars, and trucks of all sizes. Security self-storage offers free use of their moving truck for most move-ins. Security self-storage at 684-9393, locally owned, family operated, and again, I think that guy comes to help you move also. <laughs> Second and about five. Now run Katani, bouncing off tacklers. Eric Katani, so hard to bring down. Maybe a yard shy of the first down. And he did good to get that. And he did one of his favorite things. Mark kept the legs moving. You see him, he got the initial hit. He spun away from that hit and yep. kicked it even farther outside to get himself close. It depends on where they spot the football, but it looked like he was within a yard of the first down. Wow, they gave it to him. That's just all Eric Katani. Tremendous second and third effort. So the Cougars lead by four, and they would like to add to that on this drive as their defense has struggled with the Walsh offense the last couple times, last few times they've had the ball. Back to that formation, they started the game with the two wides and a tight end. Katani, and he won't get away from that, just absorbed. John McGrordy, the linebacker, helped finish him off, but Gomer was in the neighborhood, the defensive end. The linebackers, Mark, creeping up to the line of scrimmage on that play as soon as the ball was hiked. There was eight men already on the line of scrimmage, so in that kind of thing, a delayed handoff is just not gonna work because the linemen have already been overwhelmed. You need to get somebody through that line before anybody knows what's going on. Lost a yard, second and 11. Walsh showing blitz. They'll get the ball off. Burke Howard trying to make a play. As he caught it, couldn't break a tackle. It'll be third and about three, maybe four. But Mark, and that just is, is there's a prime example of halftime adjustments. Coach Mike Bell talked before the half about he wasn't happy with Ricky getting sacked, couldn't find his receivers right there. A quick two-step drop, and he threw immediately to Burke Howard. Those are the kinds of plays that they did against Hubbard very effectively, and the kinds of plays that got them here that we were wondering at the end of the first half where they were. Yeah, the slants we still haven't seen, but the same quick strike action there. Third and they'll call it four. Ball at the 45 of Walsh. That's Lakovic in motion. And they'll give to Timichuk, just trying to power ahead. Interesting call on third and four. The fullback, you do get that quick hit capability there, but as soon as they're on to you. Well, especially, too, since we haven't heard from Joe Timichuk offensively yet this game until just now. I mean, 
That was the first thing. One of the most interesting stats at halftime that caught my eye, Mark, was that Lake Catholic had 88 yards rushing in the first half. 81 of those by Katani. Yeah. And he had the big one for a touchdown, which is about 55 yards long. They'll punt it. Dennis Vaughn couldn't handle it, but gets it away. And Chambers is back there to receive it. It'll roll. Wow. Did they stop that? Unbelievable. Great special teams play by the Lake Catholic Cougars. Are they going to say he was in the end zone now? There's a discussion here. Mark, I don't see how they can make that call because the officials had not even caught up to the plate, and they had a terrible angle with which to call that from. It looks like they're going to down at the one, although there is a discussion now going on. Here it is right here. See, he Jumps, flings it back. Jumps, puts it back right there. Now, the thing is, he has to reestablish his position outside of the goal line. And we, we get a good look as the replay finished a little short there, but it was Mike Ashby who got down, saved the football. And Walsh gets it on their own one yard line. The significance of Chambers being out to receive the punt, remember he looked, came up lame at the end of the first half. Now here's a gamble for Lake Catholic. Do you want to bring in an all out blitz? See if you can push them back, get the safety, but you also got to keep an eye on Mike Chambers. And Walsh with tons of beef in there. They've got Shepard at the tailback, bigger than Woolridge, the other guy they'll use. They'll give it to Budney, the fullback, and he'll get him the proverbial breathing room out to the six. And that's exactly what you want to do there. You want to get yourself some room so you can operate, especially with someone like Doug Snyder, who's a pocket passer, likes to take the five-step drop and look around. So if you're going to throw the football, You'd rather have him dropping back to the goal line and throwing it than dropping back to the end line in the back of the end zone because if he has to scramble, he's got nowhere to go. Budney got four. Second and six now. Two receivers to the top of your screen. The back split behind Snyder there. They'll show Blitz. Budney again. Breaking tackles. And out to the 20-yard line. No, that's Trey Bennett who we saw for one drive earlier in the game. He's another guy that runs hard, and we mentioned six foot 195. He is a big dude. Let's credit the left tackle, Dustin Bash, because that time Eric Katani coming in from his outside linebacker spot. Bash picked him up, was able to hold up Katani as he had the first shot at the runner, but yep. he just missed. He came in a little bit too late. And you saw Ashby there try to grab one of those thighs to bring down Bennett, wasn't able to. That's a, that's. Not very easy. They'll run Shepard. He surges ahead near the 25. Gain of four, maybe five on the play. Talk a little bit about the keys of the game and what we thought Lake had to do to win this ball game in the beginning. First one was long sustained drives, which yes, they sort of done, but not like they did last week against Hubbard. This other thing, play with confidence. They've beaten Walsh before. To me, Mark, it looks like Walsh is a little bit more confident because they faced a lot of adversity coming back from a couple of scores. And again, right here, being pinned back on their goal line and they're moving the ball effectively. Two receivers to the top of your screen. Cougars showing blitz. They give to Shepard. And he is met at the 26-yard line by Eric Katani. Lake blitzing three of their four linebackers that time. They left Katani back just in case the ball was going to the outside. That's exactly what happened. So he was there to make the play. He had not overrun the play like the rest of the blitzers. Let's go down to the sideline. Jeff Morganti. You know, a few plays ago when Budney ran the football, Coach uh, Scott O'Donnell, the defensive coordinator for the Cougars, said, Eric, they're running right at you. you got to come up and make a stop. Eric certainly doing the job that time. Back up top. Third and three. Seven in the box for Lake Catholic. Snyder will roll it. Wants the sideline. Incomplete one at Makovac. And Latkovic was in coverage, or was that Petrozello? Looked like Petrozello yep. from here, Mark, and that was excellent, excellent coverage. He was with them step for step. They originally started out with two receivers out there. Mike Chambers cut to the inside. 
Snyder decided to go for the fly pattern, but Lackovic, or I'm sorry, Petrozello with him step for step. I don't think the receiver had a spot. I mean, it was just to, you know, hey, air it out and, and start praying. Sideline and yeah, pretty well covered. The punt will be taken by Howard. Gets lost to football, and the Cougars will fall on it. Right place, right time. Looked like Che Bello that fell on it. All I know is if Steve Latkovic and Dave Jaranovic end up double covering Connor Makovic, <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of problems calling that play. But you get paid the big bucks for it. You know, interesting defensive set there, right, for Lake Catholic, Mark. They came with the blitz on the second down. Tani able to force that play to the outside, make a play, set up a third and three. And then a, a strange play call by Walsh on a third and short that they decided to go for the home run ball with the fly pattern instead of going to their uh, fullback. Lake able to force the punt, something that they were not able to do at all in the second quarter against Walsh. 5.52 to play third quarter, 14 to 10, Lake Catholic on top here from Twinsburg. As the teams have traded punts in the first half, Katani keeps on running. I mean, it becomes, you, you begin to say it ad nauseum, but I mean, it's ridiculous how many just hard yards this guy gets and how many yards after first contact he picks up. One of the comments you made in the first half that I can't stop thinking about, does he ever get brought down by the first hit? And I think no, no way. And usually it's not even until the third or fourth hit that he gets brought down. Got him to the century mark, 100 yards even on the day for Eric Katani. Movement, and I think they'll get the Cougars. As there was flinching from the defensive line, and then Dan Barry popped up. And they'll get him. It'll be false start and second, and about five and a half, really. It was a short one. Well, John McGrory, the linebacker, was sneaking up, faking blitz, dancing around back there. Might have distracted Dan Barry a bit, brought him up out of his stance. And we'll see if the Cougars can bounce back from this penalty. A holding penalty in the first half killed a drive. They'll run Katani. He's going to get the first down and then some. To the 38-yard line. Going back to those keys of the game, Mark, for Walsh in the first half, we had to win this game. They needed to make no mistakes. Well, they had a turnover that Lake was able to convert into a touchdown. But other than that, they've had the long, sustained drives that we thought Lake would need to win this ball game. Get the ball to Mike Chambers. They have a few times. They've gotten the ball to Mike Chambers. But more importantly, Mark, Mike Chambers, just his presence alone is disrupting this Lake Catholic defense. Right, but he hasn't been the, the playmaking dynamo that you, you may have anticipated. I mean, he hasn't you know, really been able to blow this thing or, or been a huge factor in it. Down to about the 35-yard line went Perneski on that play. You think about the, the, the attention that Mike Chambers draws, he, you would think that his his opposite number, his counterpart should have, and that would be Connor Makovac. Makovac, he should be have the big game now. You, you would think that if Chambers is going to draw the people away, it's usually the other receiver who's going to get the throws. Well, Makovac does have a big reception already on third down to like third and 12 or something, and he came up with it. Second and long for the Cougars. Blitz is picked up, and an overthrow, one at Howard. Picked up very well by Corey Perneski as one of the linebackers. It looked like McGordy again. Snuck in there. He was able to get past the line of scrimmage and Corey Perneski at the last minute because Ricky Stanzi was already cocked and ready to throw and yeah. Perneski threw the block. And we, you know, we talk about how a lot of these guys, the three backs and, and the, actually a lot of the guys on the Cougars squad block really well, but Perneski in particular, because you look at him, 5'7", 150. That's as big as me, <laughs> which is not very big. Especially and you see you sit are, next to Morgan. Yeah, and three. there are so many times you see Perneski come up with a big block either in the backfield or down the field to spring a big run. Third down. Ashby drilled. He reeled it in at about the 32, but he paid the price. Shepard just laid him out. That's really all you could do. I mean, that play, Mike Ashby running away from the football, so you knew that he was going to have to turn around to get it. And 
Shepard, those are the kinds of things that defensive backs lick their chops at. I mean, how many people do you think in the NFL would like to have that Terrell Owens in that type of position right. to get a shot at him like that? But Shepard did the right thing. He waited for the ball to be caught instead of going for the football and taking the chance. Cougars are going to punt here. They're on the Warrior 32. It's kind of that, I always call it no man's land, but usually you either see a field goal or they'll go for it, but rarely an actual punt because you don't usually gain a lot. Well, it's in the end zone, and he, it's an automatic touchback as soon as it's caught, taken back there. I, you know, I mean, you, you, you net 11 yards there, and obviously they wanted to probably pin it inside. but They did, but I'm more thinking about what Mike Chambers is doing yet again, going back there to catch that football like he did not know where he was in the field. Remember That's at the end quite, of the first yeah. half, that he, and he got hurt on that play. The, the punt should have obviously been down. He should have been nowhere around. He tried to pick it up and run with it. Same thing over there. That ball was right on the goal line. It was going into the end zone, and Chambers goes back and goes for it. What if he had tipped that ball? What yeah. if he had dropped that football? Well, and, and he mean, had traffic back there. I don't, I don't know. I didn't get it. So first and 10, Walsh. They trail by four points, 3-11 to play, third quarter. Makovac there in motion. They'll run left tackle and out to about the 23, 24 yard line. Mark, I haven't really seen, and I didn't expect this out of Mike Bell, but I haven't really seen any sort of different defensive schemes, different defensive looks. Mike Bell's the kind of guy that, look, this is the game plan, we're gonna stick to it. I think what he said to the kids at halftime is just, look, you better step it up a notch. We're not gonna change anything around, try to do something different defensively. You just need to suck it up, get in there, and stand up your blocks and make some hits. Second and six for Walsh, they'll run it weak side. And Woolridge, Almost ripped off a big one. Finally dragged down at the 45. Timichuk and Katani were able to trip him up, but he almost popped the one off. Well, he had some phenomenal blocking there, too, in front of him, Mark. I mean, he had three or four guys that he could follow, and each one of them had their eyes on somebody in a green jersey. So Woolridge had the room to run. And it was just up the rest of it was up to him. Fresh set of four for Walsh Jesuit. They'll give to Woolridge up the middle. Tried to cut right a little bit and nothing there. Maybe a yard. Looked like he wanted to slide through where the center guard are at, Mark, and Joe Timichuk did a nice job of plugging that hole up. Woolridge tried to kick it to the outside, but by that time it was way too late. Second and nine, 14 to 10, our third quarter score there. We are under the two minute mark in the third quarter at Twinsburg for tonight's regional semifinals. Fakes the handoff, Snyder wants up top. Incomplete, was looking for the tight end, Chris Noonan, who doesn't get involved in the offense very much at all, only seven receptions through 11 games. Snyder had all the time in the world, Mark, to throw that, even with Joe Timichek coming on a blitz, he was picked up well. Snyder had time to find his receiver and throw and just overthrew the man. Snyder got a lot of air under it. And yeah, over. He threw him by a bunch. So third and long. As you see Brendan Boone there trying to rile up this Cougar crowd and sideline. Where's Mike Chambers? Here's the key. Three receivers out to the right-hand side. They found Chambers wide open earlier and on Walsh, a touchdown that was called back. And the Warriors are going to call a timeout. Remember that play earlier on the goal line? I'm sorry, Chambers just, there was a penalty on the play that, that erased the play, but they had the same lineup. Three men on the outside, Chambers in the slot. The two men on the outside went across the field. Chambers was able to head towards the... Stans, he's got time. He wants the long ball, Ashby's open, caught it at the 50, and knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line, but a big gainer for the Cougars. Well, that's one of Ricky Stanzi's strengths, Mark, and we saw it last week against Hubbard when Hubbard was playing what Walsh was right there, a zone defense. Right here, you look at the receiver, he comes out, number 25, 
supposed to have him. He gave up on the play, figuring that the safety right there, number six, was supposed to come over again. The safety a little bit late and get over. That's the problems with the zone defense. You're supposed to go to an area. Once you get past an area, there could be an open space. There, and that's what it was. Jake Mack and the safety a little bit late and getting over. Stanzi saw it all the way. So first and ten, Cougars trying to answer. will extend to Katani, and he is swarmed under three white shirts. And you can break, he can break a tackle if it's one guy, but when it's three, when it's Dustin Bash, Matt Gomer, and Dave Rella all wrapped around you, two defensive linemen and a linebacker, you're not gonna break that. Well, tackle. I think everybody who plays Lake Catholic should get that particular play on video because that's how you tackle Eric Katani. They took out his legs. You go after the legs, you can't do anything, you brought them straight down. That's going to do it for the third quarter. Let you know tonight's fourth quarter. Brought to you by the Lake Catholic Gridiron Club. They raise money to benefit Cougar football. This year, they purchased new uniforms for the team and provided pregame meals for the cheerleaders, coaches, and players. One of several fundraisers is their annual clam bake. We want to thank Kevin Barry and the rest of the Gridiron Club members for their support of high school football on Comcast this season. Should Lake Catholic win and advance, we will be there next week. I'll be there next week. Yeah, I will. I'll be in Columbus. You'll be in Columbus. Ohio State Probably, is what, what, what's going on in uh, Columbus in, in late November? I don't get uh, it. Minor football game. Oh. There's this Wait, one school called they, Ohio State, and there's this other school that these scumbags up north. Oh, Wait. yeah, John Carroll. Right. All right. Yeah. Right now, the Petrozello family is growling that I just called Michigan the scumbags up north. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Dave, a Wolverine alum. He didn't work with us this year. No, I remember him last year. Got some insight. But uh, he knows what kind of car you drive, Schwab, so uh, <laughs> best of luck to you. You know, this reminds me of that big catch by Connor Makovac. Reminds us of a game that we did several years ago, Schwab, you and I, well, that, that, that's another story for another. I'll get to it after this play. You know it's coming. 17 14. Cougars trail with a second and 10 here. Proneski just buried immediately. Boy, there was no hole there at all. Right now, the Walsh defensive line again dominating the line of scrimmage right there. You saw two running plays stopped in either in the backfield or right at the line of scrimmage. Scott Biggie was there to knock him down the defensive tackle. You better be a lineman when your last name is Biggie. <laughs> Plays center and tackle. And it's third and about nine and a half, really. Maybe quarterback draw. And after the big bomb to Ashby, the Cougars have come up empty on two runs. Stanzi will float screen. out the screen. Katani needs the corner. Hit at the 41 and knocked down there. Going to be well shy of the first down. They ran that very effectively last week in the beginning of the game, Mark, where they needed a big play and they ran that jailbreak screen. It was set up perfectly. This time, Katani not as many blockers out in front as he would have liked. And he was forced to race for the sidelines, try to get around. But again, the speed of the Walsh defense beat him to it. Yep. You see, some of the players, number 50 there, he's lagging behind. When they ran this play last week, or the, the ultimate of this play was your blockers will be set by the time you get the football. Unfortunately, Stanzi under a bit of pressure had to get rid of the ball a little bit early. Well, and you wonder if, if that was the that was the type of play where maybe Katani was more of a safety valve versus a, de a design screen where you will have more guys hanging around you. Chambers calls for the fair catch and gets it at the 16-yard line. And with 11.03 to play in the ball game, the Cougar defense now needs to come up and get the football back because you know Walsh, would love to go down the field, chew up a lot of time, and add a touchdown to make this a two-possession game. And I'm sure that's exactly what's on their mind. You know, right now is the time where if, the, if this defense is going to make a play, now is the time to do it. Especially, they've got Woolridge and Shepard to run this football, the big guy and the little guy. And so a nice mixture of them could really hurt Lake if Walsh can run a, a nice, sustained, chew-the-clock drive here. Well, and lately, they've also brought in Trey Bennett. And Budney, the fullback's got a couple of carries of Lake. Although this is Woolridge. Tries the right side and nothing. Maybe a yard. 
Another thing that you have to watch out for, and I'm surprised, Mark, that we have not seen it yet this game when you have somebody of the caliber of Mike Chambers on this team is a play-action pass. Or even a wide receiver screen. Yeah. In a running type situation when you know that they have the lead, it's the fourth quarter, they're going to try to chew up this clock. A nice fake here, and if you can get, there's Chambers split left. So right now, yep. he's in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Chambers up top off your screen, Mike Ashby shadowing him. And they'll run Woolridge, trying to get that corner and he won't get it. Got maybe a yard, it'll be third and long for Walsh. Well, so far so good, a nice defensive stand by the Cougars here, Mark. But again, here's the big play because this is what hurt them just a few minutes ago, the third and nine. Yeah. They got the pressure they wanted on Snyder. The play we thought was broken, but right now, if at any time, is when you need to stay with your man here. As you see Woolrich try to get around the corner, nice job by the entire Cougar defense. There's Timichuk in there, number 34, Giro sealing it off. Him off. Yep. Third and seven. Stay with your man no matter what. And there it is, the three split out to the right. Three wides off your screen there. Snyder will roll it. Pump fake. Got a man wide open. Shepard at midfield. He'll turn on the Jets. Isaiah Shepard. Touchdown. Mark, this is the exact same play that the Warriors ran earlier when Mike Chambers dropped the football in the end zone. The ball, the play called off because of the illegal procedure. They have three wide outs to the right side. Two of them cut across the field. The other one goes the opposite way. It is specifically designed this way. Draw the defense away from the football. And I don't know if you can get any more wide, wide open than that no. right there. And then from here, you just run away from people. And that's exactly what he did. Mm -mm -mm. We saw 14. the formation as it was set up. You knew the play was coming. But this time, it was not Mike Chambers. Chambers used as the decoy. And again, on third and long. Two quick strike touchdowns from the Walsh Warriors. And they have taken a commanding 24-14 lead with 9.26 to play in the football game. And right now, Lake Catholic is just stunned. Mark, seeing what Lake Catholic did offensively last week, I'm kind of surprised that they did not try some of the same things this week. I mean, yes, granted, Walsh, a much better defensive team than Hubbard, one of the fastest defensive teams in the area, but Ricky Stanzi has lived on the slant pass, the quick hitters all year long. I mean, that's what's given him the passing game. Lake Catholic hasn't even tried one of those yet. I mean, this is what got them to where they're at. And th they haven't even tried one of them. I don't know if they're respecting the speed of the Walsh defense or what, but they have not tried it. Their passes that they've thrown have either been screens or fly patterns down the field. They need to find something in the middle. Well, they need to find something here offensively as they need two scores in under 10 minutes. Well, good thing for Lake Catholic. If they kick to him, one of their playmakers, I mean, this kid's exciting, Burke Howard. He's always good well, for something. He can run something back. And he's already he's got a big return today a to about the 50. Times. As DeMarchi puts the foot into it, it'll be a squibber. They're not even going to give it to Burke Howard. And Petrozello wheels it out to about the 39-yard line. Not bad field position. Still plenty of time. It's not like there's two minutes left. There's nine and a half. The thing is, the momentum right now is all on the Walsh side of the field. 14 unanswered points on big plays on third and long. What to do? What do you do if you're if you're Lake Catholic? Do you start out in the run? Because that's telling them, like, oh, ho hum, we know we have plenty of time. Or do you start on a pass where some people might think, oh, they're all rattled, they need to get all this back. I say you go to a pass, but you go to a high percentage pass to get Ricky Stanzi yeah. some confidence back there, give him a quick completion, and let him start from there. Two receivers to the top of your screen. And some miscommunication there. Well, Corey Perneski was sprinting out towards the sidelines. And it looked like the right guard moved also, yeah. but the ball wasn't snapped. Everybody ready to go but the center. So move it back five. It'll be first and 15 and not the way to start a drive for the Cougars. It's not panic time yet. 9.22 to go. You're down by 10. 
but you have to move the football. Four-man rush, Stanzi. Ball's batted down. Dustin Bash, 6'3 defensive lineman, put those hands in the air, and that's a tall guy to throw over. Second and 15. Stanzi tried the quick drop, the only, you know, the two-step drop, but that pocket collapsed so fast that he had to step up and make a throw. I don't even think his receivers were ready to get it anyways had it gotten past the line of scrimmage. Wall showing blitz as McGrory creeped up. Now he'll back away. Stanzi will take it himself. Stepping over tacklers to about the 43. Well, they're going to calm down maybe at the 41. It'll be third and about seven, but this is makeable. Whereas if you're throwing incomplete pass, it's third and 15. To the sidelines we go, Jeff Morganti. Earlier this week, I had a chance to talk to Walsh coach Jerry Raiden, Raiden, and how coincidental is it that he said when they lost to Lake Catholic the first time, they didn't play well in the second half of that ball game, and since then, they have played extremely well, including in their 13-7 loss to Hoban, in second halves of each of those ball games past week five, including tonight. Back up top. Four receivers set now. Sansi floats sideline incomplete. Threw it high, wanted Burke Howard. No, that's Lakovic, beg your pardon. And a three and out for the Cougars. Are they going to go for it? Well, you, you know what? You're, I oh, don't know. The, uh, the, I'll tell you what. The punt return unit for Walsh was on the field. And the Lee Catholic offense, <laughs> we're not moving. Fourth I mean, and eight. This doesn't necessarily make or break your season. You're just trying to get things moving. Here we go. This is critical, though. If they don't get it, Walsh has a very short field. They'll rush four. Jailbreak screen, Katani hit and wrapped. Somebody finally was the first man to hit him and knock him down, Mike Netling at the 46. And Katani couldn't break that tackle. Walsh Jesuit takes over. Mark, and that was Mike Netling's only job to do on the field was to watch Eric Katani, and that's exactly what he did. Don't think that Jerry Reardon hasn't watched this team before. He knows what plays they go to when they need to make a play, and one of them is the screen to Katani. Netling did not move after the ball was snapped. He waited for Katani to come to him, and he had him wrapped as he got the football. And the Cougar defense really has their feet to the fire now. Ball at their own 46. They got to get the ball back for the offense, down by 10. They'll show blitz. It's picked up. Woolrich to the outside. Katani stretches it out, forces him out of bounds at about the 41. That'll stop the clock, 8.19 to play. Walsh with a 10-point lead and the football. Jeff Morgani talked about the instincts of Mark Woolridge, and there it is right there. You saw Lay coming up to blitz. They had three of their linebackers up to the line of scrimmage when the ball was hiked, and Woolridge can see that. He knows he's got the speed, so instead of going up the middle, he cuts it to the outside, makes him play a game of chase. Second and five. Makovac there in motion. They'll give to the fullback. It's Bennett playing the fullback that time. And he picked up a couple to the 39. And was he knocked out also? Yeah, they've done they've done Lake a favor here on two running plays, getting out of bounds. Mark, sooner or later, Lake's going to have to start to gamble a bit on defense here. All night long, they've had a man on Mike Chambers at the line, but they've also drifted a safety over who was always within five yards of Mike Chambers and the other defender. Right now, they might have to gamble, put Chambers in some one-on-one, -on -one, and stuff up this line right now, especially on a third and short. Third and three, long two. Three wides out right. Wow. And Snyder will take it himself. He's got room to run. Fumble the football. The Lake Catholic Cougars have it. Oh, what a break for Lake. Snyder had the first down and just flat out dropped the Chalupa. What a phenomenal play call by Walsh, though, Mark. We haven't even seen it all night long. Snyder, the straight drop back passer. He dropped back two steps and then took off. Yep. An excellent third down call. They're right there, and no one really caused it, Mark. It just it just slipped out. I don't know if he was trying to switch hands to the sidelines. Jeff Morganti, you had a good view. 
Yeah, it was a nice play uh, by the Cougars, but the point I was going to make, guys, offensively, Lake's got to go back with what got them to this point in the season. They got to go back to playing in a hurry. They got to go to the spread, go everything out of the gun, throw the ball, throw slants, move the ball vertically instead of side to side. Back up top. Thanks, Jeff. First and 10, Lake at the 20-yard line. It's as good as a punt with a touchback, but they need to come up with something offensively. Stanzi fires over the middle. Latkovic reels it in. Paste it at the 43, but he'll move the chains. And the Cougars have new life. Lackovic found a spot between defenders. But again, Mark, that is not Lake Catholic's game, Mark. Jeff Morgan just brought up. It's the spread. Get those receivers out there. If they're not there, run that football. Have them run the quick slants. Right there, you see Lackovic. He was just happened to be in between two people. A yep. lot of people down there. But Lackovic got past his original man. The safety had not been over to pick him up. Well, a 24-yard gain, I think they'll take it. Stanzi, QB draw. Moving the pile, he got almost nine yards on that. Into Warrior territory to about the 47. It'll be second and one. Clock at 7.35, 34, 33 to play in the game. 24, 14, Walsh. They've ripped off 14 unanswered. Lake's got to keep it going. They got to keep the momentum on their side. Keep the momentum on their side, I'm sorry. And look, they're keeping up. No huddle, quick offense. They'll run Katani. He's got blockers. And pasted at the 45. That thing's closed up in a hurry. Still got the first down, though, which will stop the clock while they reset the chains. Well, he had Corey Pernesky out there, but he also had Brian Stevenson, the guard, pulling. Unfortunately, Stevenson fell down. And that enabled one of the Warriors to sneak in there and make Katani change his track. Brought him down before he could turn the corner. First and 10 for the Cougars. Stanzi looks, has time, zips it incomplete. Wanted Ashby. Looked like he had a step. Credit Mike Ashby for getting there, Mark, because Ashby was held up at the line of scrimmage. Had trouble starting off his route. Ran down, turned around. Ricky Stanzi threw the ball a bit too early. But those are the kinds of passes that got him there, and those are the kinds of passes they're going to have to get back to. Second and 10. Empty backfield, three wides up top. They'll rush four. Stanzi needs to get rid of it. Incomplete. He got hit as he threw. Wanted Burke Howard, had it near him. It'll be third and 10, and I've got to imagine it's two down territory if they went for it on about their own 40. It obviously is. Ricky Stanzi right now, Mark, what he needs to do is he needs to calm down. He needs to relax those last two throws. He's been under a bit of pressure. He's tried to force the football, and he's giving up some accuracy when he tries to do that. Stanzi now 14 of 22, 142 yards, and a touchdown. Third and 10 for the Cougars. They trail by 10. There's the slant. Incomplete one at Pruneski. Mark, that's the third pass in a row where Ricky Stanzi has been off the mark. Fourth and 10, and no question about it, they're going to go for it here. That ball thrown too high. He needs to calm down, take his time, find a receiver, and find that accuracy that he was known for earlier in the season. Huge, huge play. If they don't convert, they still have a chance, but the odds are really stacked against him. Stanzi has time. Latkovic's got it. First down, Cougars at the 30-yard line. That was just a basic clear it out, clear it out. They had four wideouts, three of them went deep, and Lackovic stayed back. He caught the ball in front of the defense. As you'll see, no one in front of him, everybody behind Steve Lackovic right here. One, two, three. To the 16-yard line for a first down that'll stop the clock while they move the chains. We'll go down to the sideline to Jeff Morganti. Well, John Kramer, the offensive coordinator, telling the offense and motioning with his hands, let's go, let's get, get in this quick, and let's get the playoff quick. Back up top. So first and 10. Mark, when Lake splits out the receivers, like right now, look at the two at the top of the screen. They're in man-to-man -man coverage. This is what Ricky Stanzi likes. He likes to have his guys in man-to-man. -man. They'll float it out. It's Pruneski trying for the corner. Pruneski smacked down at about the nine-yard line. And did he get out of bounds and stop the clock? No. They'll say he was knocked down inbounds. Official right there to make the call, though. 
It looked like there were a couple of guys open over the middle. It looked like Dan Quisenberry throwing the football. <laughs> nice play there by Trey Bennett to knock him down and keep him inbounds. 5.24 to play in the game. Lake needs two scores. Corner pattern, end zone, caught, touchdown Cougars! Steve Latkovic, Mark. Steve Latkovic's second touchdown of the game. And they are an extra point away from making it a three-point football game with 5.16 to play. Just float it up, let him go up and pull it down. Latkovic at 6-1. He had to go up in the air on a fourth and 10 to pull it down. He's, he's come up with the big plays for this team, so why not go to him? I was looking at the left side. He had two men in one-on-one -on -one coverage. That time, Lakovic had two guys near him, but Stanzi not afraid to throw to his favorite receiver. And now a critical extra point for Miskana. And it is true. Lakovic, two touchdowns tonight. Had only two on the regular season. But they have trimmed it to a field goal. 5-16 to play in the ball game, and now the onus goes back to the Cougar defense. And... For as long as you might think that it took, it's a pretty fast drive. Late got sure. his football to start this drive mark with seven and a half minutes to go. It only took him two minutes as we got 5.16 left. And they have all three timeouts in case you're wondering. Walsh has two. They burned one in the third quarter. Let's go down to the sidelines. Jeff, what do you have? You guys mentioned the owners falls back on the Lake Catholic defense all throughout the course of the night. Defensive coordinator Scott O'Donnell's been in the face of that defensive line group and also the linebackers. Guys, you've got to make plays. You've got to put pressure on the quarterback. This is the biggest time, fellas. The uh, final five minutes, 15 seconds in which they got to heed the words of their defensive coordinator. Back up top. Thanks, Jeff. And Jeff's absolutely right, Mark. This is the, pretty much the season for the Lake Catholic defense right here. And, and basically, I think just the scores that Walsh Jesuit has come up with tonight have been based on just some mental mistakes by the Cougar defense. Chambers trying to get it outside. Breaks a tackle, and Chambers will be ridden down inside the 20. And that was a big play. The last thing you need for... If you're a Cougar fan, is to have the Warriors answer with a big play on special teams. I look at this Lake Cougar, Lake Catholic Cougar defense is having an uphill battle. Mark, there's so many people they got to worry about. They got to worry about. They got. They, they got to worry about Woolridge. They got to worry about Shepard. They got to worry about Chambers. They got to keep an eye on Snyder. I mean, it's really going to be a test. And Makovic's burned him a couple. And Makovic too. It's really going to be a test of this defense right here. That's the thing, Makovic with two of the bigger plays tonight. Had the big touchdown bomb and also had a huge grab on third down earlier in the game. Cougars have struggled all night on third and long. It's first and 10 here. They'll run Woolrich. He gets it out to the 26 yard line and a gain of about seven or eight on first down. As we now are under five minutes to play in the game. Woolrich. Looking a bit winded as he got up from that play. I know he's played hard tonight, but think about it. He's been out a couple of games this season with an injury, so he might be a, a bit tired right now as far as conditioning goes. That play started by the right tackle, Nick Shepas. He just stood up Katani. Would not allow him to shed the block to make a play. Second, and they'll call it one. Woolridge takes it. Goes into that line, and he got only a couple, but it was enough for a first down. Lake starting to gamble a bit on defense, Mark. There was nine men on the line of scrimmage when that ball was snapped. The linebackers creeping forward. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage on the receivers. It's what you gotta do here. You gotta keep them from advancing those chains. First and 10 Warriors, 418 and rolling on the clock. Cougars can give up a first down or two, but that would be about it. They have got to stop and get the ball back. Long count. Well, keep milking that clock. They'll give it to Trey Bennett. Bennett lost the ball! Oh boy, it bounced Woo. right back to him. Yeah, one of the rare times that a football hits the ground and bounces right back up to you, but he went through there and it looked like he had actually gotten past the first wave of tacklers, Mark getting ready to go out into the open. See Bennett 
doink, and it came right back oh, right up. Right there, the defender that hit him, he hit the football, and that's exactly what to do in a situation like this. Second and five, 3.30 and ticking on the clock. What a bullet dodge there. Makovic comes in motion. They got the big boys back there, Budney and Bennett. And they'll milk that play clock for all it's worth. Snyder gives to Budney. And he is ahead to the 41 yard line. That is enough for a first down to move the chains. Clock stops now at 3.09. They will reset it when the ball is started. And it starts now for the Cougars. From here on out, it's got to be a three and out. They do have three timeouts. Well, you're gonna have but to they need to go to work now. On the replay here, you see Eric Catani riding him down. The reason that Eric Catani didn't make the tackle when he first hit him, he was going for the football. He had his hands on the arm that was holding the football as he was trying to bring the runner down. I formation, they got Trey Bennett, the bigger tailback. Look at everyone up into the line of scrimmage. The whole team within five yards. Yep, they've got Chambers one-on-one. -on -one. He's, he's on an island. And they'll run Bennett, and he's to the 46-yard line. That will be a gain of about five, and Lake Catholic will burn their first here timeout. Come, here comes the timeout. Mark, as you mentioned, too, I mean, they had pretty much all 11 guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage of that play. And for Bennett to come out and be able to get five yards yeah. is not a good sign when you had at least nine or ten guys up there. I'd say ten because the safeties were playing tight or fairly tight. Second and five offensively for Walsh tonight, when they get back on the field. Go and ahead. offensively tonight, the Warriors have done a pretty good job of keeping Lake Catholic guessing as far as play calling goes. I mean, you saw that quarterback draw by Snyder when he fumbled the football, but he had a first down, I and mean, they were right there right. to go in and put this game away. But that was an interesting call that no one expected. A lot of the broken plays and things, so watch for them to come up with something different here. You're focused on Mike Chambers, you're focused on Woolridge, you're focused on Shepard. Wait for somebody else to make a play here. Walsh leads by a field goal, 24-21. It had been 14-10 Lake Catholic for a good portion of the night. And then the Warriors came up with two quick touchdowns at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Took a 24-14 lead, and Lake just got back on the board with another touchdown. They need the ball back, though. This is Trey Bennett. He's hit at the line and stuffed. He got maybe a half a yard. And will the Cougars burn a timeout? Yes, they will. It'll be third. At about four and a half, maybe five, and I think it's safe to say third in the season for Lake Catholic. Credit Joe Timichuk on that play. He was Joe Timichuk, the middle linebacker, team leader. He was lined up as a down lineman on that play. They are really stuffing the box. They want to make sure that Walsh cannot move the chains. But now, here comes the thing, third down. Third down, and Lake has had Walsh in a couple of third and longs. They sure. scored a touchdown on one, and they two got touchdowns. two touchdowns on third and longs. They got it. This is it right here, as you mentioned, Mark. You got to be aware if there's a broken play, do not give up on your man. Everybody find someone and stay with them. Talk about balance of the Walsh backfield. Isaiah Shepard, 58 yards and a touchdown. Mark Woolridge, 54 yards. Trey Bennett, 48 yards. Budney's got 19. That's Brendan Boone, the senior linebacker. Been a part of this defense for a few years now as he's trying to rally the troops. Lake Catholic needs a stop here. If they don't get it, they need possibly divine intervention to pull this one out. They'll reverse it. Chambers, Chambers. drilled, won't get it. And Walsh will punt the football. That was something different I was talking about. A very interesting call by yeah. Jerry Rarden. I'm not sure what he was doing. Whenever you run something like a reverse, look, this play is starting. This play is starting eight yards behind the line of scrimmage because you're running something like a reverse. You're actually moving backwards to move forward. Right. And they they, they faked it to the fullback, Budney. Sipkis, the defensive end, was the one that initiated the tackle on Chambers. And now it's 2.21 to play in the game. Fourth and four, Lake has run dry of timeouts. What an interesting play call. No one has been able to run outside in Lake Catholic all season long. And to come up with something like that, sure, you're trying to catch him off balance, catch him sleeping, but still, that's got high, no, that's that's just a high, uh, you know, well, low percentage play, actually, when you're trying to get the first down to win this game. 
That is Chambers' first carry of the year. Comes at an interesting time on third and four when you're trying to put away a playoff game, although if it works, he looks like a genius. Yeah. And we got Mike Ashby back to take this punt. Will they fake it? No. You didn't think they would, but you never know. Ashby has it, and he is ripped down at the 15-yard line. So the Cougars have two minutes and 12 seconds, no timeouts, 85 yards in front of them. The good news is for them, since they got a touchdown already, they can keep the field goal kind of in the back pocket. Well, and that's another thing we start talking about, the kicking game, if they can get down in. I mean, have we really seen Lake kick that many field um, goals this year? Miss Gannon's not bad, but I mean, you know, you'd, he's not gonna bang you one from 50 no. yards or anything like that. So here we go, remember clock stops on a first down to reset. But that is the only help they'll get. That are going out of bounds because they are out of timeouts. Well, if they're gonna run the football, they're gonna take Katani and sweeps. Or they'll take Stanzi on QB draws. But other than that, look for them to throw. First and 10, Stanzi, quick hitter. Latkovic got about seven. And they can throw that slant as much as they want, as long as they keep moving the chain, stopping the clock, and keeping that offense going. Except they didn't stop the clock there. We are now under two minutes to play in the game. 56, 55, 154 in the ball game. Sips it over the middle. Perneski, wide open, fumble. the ball! And Lake Catholic fell back on it at the 40 yard line. Mark, if Corey Perneski yep. caught that ball in stride, he was gone. Yeah, yep, if he caught it in stride, he was gone. But he had to reach back and then caught, look at that. He had just open space in front of him. And then the ball got poked away, and then is that Latkovic that was in the right place? Well, Jake Mack and the safety going to make the tackle on Perneski with the presence of mind. He saw Mack and going for the football, try to change hands. That's where the fumble occurred. First and 10, under a minute 40 in the game. Stanzi with time, uncorks deep ball. Got a man, Burke Howard. He's got it at the 30. Burke Howard still on his feet. Burke Howard inside the five, and a flag. Mark, that's a face mask on the tackle. It's going to set Lake up first and goal. Ball was underthrown, Mark. I thought it was going to be intercepted. It looked like, who is it? Isaiah Shepard, number 29 on the coverage. Burke, there it is. Howard was wide open. But here is it at the end of the Shepherd play, Mark. Shepard falls down. It's the safety. It's Chambers. You see him turn around, look back, and right yep. here, the face mask. And that's a yep. personal foul. Yep. That's first and goal late. Well, I mean, it's first and goal. That's the difference between first and goal and the three or first and goal at the one and a half. So it, it's kind of a moot point, but... Let's go downstairs, Jeff Morganti to the sideline. Well, this is where you want to go back to your conventional set. Get Stanzi under center and go to that power eye with Timichuk and Katana. That's exactly what they're doing. Back up top. We haven't heard from Joe Timichuk carrying the football except for once tonight. Keep in mind also, Mark, Stanzi likes to run the QB yep. sneak in these situations. Geronovic in as the crunch back, the extra blocker. Standing right behind Stanzi. Walsh with two timeouts. So if Lake doesn't get in here, they can stop the clock. They'll give Timachuk. Touchdown, Lake Cat! Unbelievable! Timachuk followed the right side. He went right behind Dan Barry and Brian Stevenson. They even had Bob Steck, the guard from the left side, pulling over. It's your classic off tackle play. And the fullback just buries it in there for his 16th touchdown, no, 14th touchdown of the season. He had one last week against Hubbard. About 10 minutes ago, this club looked dead and buried. Down by 10, Walsh had the ball, and Snyder was running for a first down. The extra point is good. You know, you remember in 2001 where we followed this team, you and I working for another broadcasting entity, we followed this team to the state championship. Remember that game? Yep. Overtime. Yeah, and it was Dan Svelbar that took it in. And this is the kind of games that Lake comes up with. Yeah. I mean, they, they, these guys don't quit and it always seems that they need a big play to go their way they come up with it the key right now mark has been the fact that ricky stanzi has found his receivers in man-on-man -man coverage 
the late Catholic receiver's mark are too good to be covered man-to-man. -man. He picked apart Hubbard last week with the same situation. He's doing it right now in these last few minutes against Walsh. Two fumbles in this fourth quarter were critical. One, the one by Snyder that gave, the, gave new life to Lake Catholic. The other one, Pruneski coughed it up on the 40 and Latkovic saved this drive for Lake Catholic. Mike Chambers, one of the up men here, Mark, as you got three wide, or three receivers back. Yep, and they've got uh, and they're switching back places there. Right now. Chambers and Woolridge are switching places right now. They want their playmakers to get this football. And normally that is Dave Rella back there to receive it, but you, you trade off there, you get an extra playmaker in. Burke Howard will squib it. It bangs off one of the up backs. The Cougars might have it. If Lake has that football, game's over, Mark. And Walsh the says problem. they have it. Boy, is this, is this dead silent here or what? Oh, boy. That ball banged right off Gerald Stoffel. And we might, as well explain this, and we might as well explain this rule here. A kickoff is a free kick. Yeah. If, you, if you recover your kickoff, that's your ball. That's what a free kick now, is all about. And the, the up backs, he's not expecting to get this football. Right. He's ready to go back and block. The ball hits him in the side. Oh, wait, I, I think I better go get that. If, and if people are wondering, what in the world are they doing trying an onside kick? That wasn't really an onside. It was no. a squibber trying to keep it away from the playmakers. It just happened to go straight as a string and hit that guy. So Walsh is in great position now with two timeouts and good field position. Snyder. Evades the sack, gets down. Oh, almost intercepted. Petrozello with stride for stride. Mark, defensively for Lake Catholic, this is what you have to do right here. You have to sit back. You have to not give up the big play. Remember, Walsh needs a touchdown. They need a touchdown to win this game. Right. A field goal means nothing to them. Snyder, 222 yards through the air. Makovic, 89 yards in a score. Chambers, 54. Shepard with 78, most of them came on that one big play. And they are chanting defense here on the Cougar side of the field, second and 10, minute eight to play. Snyder to throw, he'll step up. Chambers catches it and is roped down at about the 37 yard line by Latkovic. And that'll stop the clock and suddenly Walsh is in great position here because they got a lot of, over a minute, 36 yards, two timeouts. Mark, Lake needs to drop more men back. They need to do what Walsh was doing to them earlier in the game. Rush maybe four and keep seven back in pass coverage with at least two of those guys on Mike Chambers. You see the score. Look underneath the score bar. Everyone on the Cougars' sideline on their knees holding hands. 50 seconds and rolling. Snyder, he'll roll. Under pressure. Tipped around and incomplete. The Cougars want grounding. Yeah, and Mike Bell's all the way on the field because really, Mark, show me where there was an eligible receiver in that area. I, if we can get a replay, I don't, I don't know. But it was interesting <laughs> that Snyder, a man came right at him. He didn't even make a move. He caught Snyder on his back, on the back of his feet. Here comes the man right here. Yep, up the middle. And Snyder had nowhere to go. He was, his weight was shifted. That now was, who's he throwing to? It was Giro. I, not a soul except for linemen. They were all linemen. I'm, I'm looking to see if there's a tight end no, or anything. there's not a soul. Rob, except no, Martin. there it is, 48. Bob, Bu Rob Budney, the fullback, was there. He's so big, though, he looks hey, like I a line. I thought he was a guard. <laughs> Second and 10. Giro. He'll uncork it deep. Oh, he dropped it! He dropped it! Ball hit him right in the chest. Now, he was in traffic. And they want to hold on Nate Giro. As you saw, he had a line. Yeah, I thought Giro got tackled on the way in, but. Right through the hands. Shepard had it. Mm -mm -mm. Jeff Morgani to the sidelines. Schwabi from field level. That was oh. six. Boy, did oh. Shepard let one go. Yes, Big break he did. for the Cougars. We just saw the replay. He was in traffic, but the ball, nobody flashed him. That's no, where maybe an arm comes in front of your eyes. It just went right through his hands. 36 seconds to play. Third and 10, Walsh Jesuit needs a touchdown. Snyder has time. Zips it, caught by Chambers, roped down at the 16 yard line. Now Walsh still has two timeouts, remember. Yeah, they got plenty of time. Right now, Mark, they're in the driver's seat. Time for the Cougar defense to step up now. 
you got to guard that end zone. This is what this is classic prevent defense, and Walsh is going to think about it now. Yeah, they got to burn a timeout. Develop something here. But they will have one left and 29 seconds left on the clock. Actually, a smart play by Doug Snyder. They took what the defense was giving them, got themselves down in there. Somebody by the name of John Elway did this against the Cleveland Browns <laughs> yeah. in 1986. But that's what you got to do when you're playing this type of defense. Take what they give you and get yourself down there. Now they have plenty of time. They have 29 seconds. They have one timeout left, and they're inside the 20-yard line. Time to run three. Four plays sure. if they want. Jeff Morganti to the sidelines. What do you have? Well, occasionally Stanzi can come out and uh, play a DB. He did come out in the field, but the Scott O'Donnell waved him back off, so he's not going to be uh, DB. And figure he, with his frame, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, he'd be a good one to have back there, back up top. Mm -mm -mm. The big play, to me the big play is the squib kick that went off that went off the up back. It did. It gave Walsh phenomenal field position. Gerald Stoffel, who was just waiting to block and then had a ball just whack off him and then he managed to fall I, on it. And I don't think it was supposed to happen that way. It wasn't supposed to hit one of the up linemen. It was supposed to just bounce past them. First and 10 for the Warriors on the 16 yard line. 29 seconds to play. 28-24, Lake Catholic leads in the ball game. Snyder throws to the end zone. Got a man! Oh, what a breakup by Latkovic! Warriors want a flag, they won't get it! Steve Latkovic has been the man for this team, especially in this second half. But Mark, interesting, it looked like Mike Chambers stumbled when he was running his pattern. As you see him, he turned around a little bit late looking for the football. I think Chambers stumbled here in the end zone. No, I, I think... Because he, Latkovic knew where the football was, Chambers did not. Well, and oh, that's, just, that's just good one-on-one -on -one coverage. No, Chambers was there. He's turned around facing. Lakovic came up and made a swat. Jeff Morganti on the sideline. That's exactly the matchup that they wanted, the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and Lakovic uh, showing his great athleticism. They're really going to have to watch Chambers uh, running a post here, fellas. Second and top. 10. Here 24 left. seconds left. Chambers at the top. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. They've got Chambers wide open. Touchdown! He caught it for a touchdown! Was he inbound? Doesn't matter, there's no replay. You're right. But it looked to me like he was dive on to get that football. And they are going nuts across the way. Chambers got free. Mm -mm -mm, that is just a sensational catch by a great high school player. And there are 18 seconds left on the clock. The Cougars will need a huge kick return, a huge you play. you have to think about, Mike Chambers is the playmaker on this team. How was he open like that well, on I, a play like this? You saw the blitz, so you figure he got one-on-one -on -one somewhere and, and made a move on somebody. Mike Ashby was in the area, and so I believe was, was Vince Petrozello. But Mike Chambers, out of all the receivers, is the guy that you want to have a man on from the line of scrimmage all the way through the play. Mm -mm -mm. What a fourth quarter we have had in Twinsburg. And there are 18 seconds left, and Lake's out of timeouts. So they need real, they need a big kick return or a big play, like a bomb, a hook and ladder, something. Well, that's not a problem for the Cougars. We've seen them do it time and time again. And we go back to, again to the squib kick that, that and I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not like no. it was intentional, but that's just the way, that's you know, how many times the fourth quarter with the fumbles did we say in this game? That's how the ball will sometimes bounce. And, and that's, that's, Mark, know. that probably is the most mm -hmm. important point of this game because you just gave Walsh an extra 20 yards to start that 20, game 30 yards, drive right sure, there. sure. And the ironic part is you're doing that to avoid the big kick return. You could hear a pin drop on the Lake Catholic side of the field right now. Yeah, you couldn't hear a thing, and, and you could hear the, the Walsh fans going crazy. It sounded a little weird with all these people right in front of you, but all the cheers coming from about 500 feet away. And they will squib it to keep it away from Burke Howard. Le uh, Petrozello picks it up at the 40-yard line. There are 15 seconds to go. You figure they need... 
35, 40 yards for a field goal? Well, I'm thinking, too, that you're going to run two plays here. You got to run two plays, and and they all have to be over ten yards. Yeah, you got to run two because plays. you have to get that clock stopped on a first Either down. Either that, or run them to the sidelines if you're going to. But this is this is obviously a two play situation. You're going to have the ball on your 40 yard line, Mark. I would say you need a good 40 yards if you want to get within good field goal right, range. Right. Yeah. And. Walsh Jesuit has just called the last time out they have. Which so. actually, this benefits Lake. You have a chance now to call both the plays Two, that you want plays. in the huddle because if something doesn't work or somebody gets caught, you can run up, you can spike the ball, or you can get your other play up. You want to call two or three plays right now in this huddle. I'm thinking you got to shoot a slant, some towards the sideline, or like you said, if you get the first down, it will stop the chains with enough time to get back up there, get set, and run another quick one. I think two plays minimum, as you said, you might be able to run three. I, th I think you can... I mean, the middle will probably be open. You know, it's usually, this is the part of the, in a high school in the college game where the first the, the clock stoppage to the first down really opens up the whole field. You can go over the middle as long as you get more than 10 yards. If, you know, you throw a couple of 15, 18 yards over the middle, stop that clock, get up, maybe spike the ball, do it again. That's the kind of thing I think we're going to see him do here. And that so might it's, be not something like, it's not like you're going to see Stanzi rip off a 60-yard bomb. No, and that might be something you, as Mike Bell, want to design, Mark, is send some of your guys to the sidelines, but leave one guy over the middle, and I'm thinking Steve Lackman yeah. right now to be the guy. Look at the Warrior defense. Three down linemen, everyone else like 10 yards off the ball. Stanzi has time. Goes over the middle, it's caught at there the 36-yard line. There are nine seconds left, so the Cougars, I'm assuming they're going to spike. Well, no, if you get up there and you run your play, they've got to spike it. They've got to spike it at the 37. And they'll do that. Seven seconds remain in the game. All right, let's think about this now. they got time for one more play and then a, maybe a kick. You need about 15 yards to get within a decent-sized field goal range here for your kicker. Do you go for that or do you go for the end zone? No, you got to go. You got to. You got to lay up. I say you throw the same kind of pass. You find the guy in between the zone, get somebody to go down to the 20-yard line, turn around, and wait for the football if it's there. Seven seconds remaining. There's the long throw right over the middle. That's what we were talking about. And Latkovic was there. Run the same thing. I, I don't know. It can't be as deep because they don't have that much time. Stanzi. The opportunity it, it, exactly. to try to win this game. And, again, it's just a matter of and, – and you can't even fault him. Mark, you can't fault the guy. I mean, he did everything he could to bring his team back. I mean, what a huge fourth quarter. He let him down there, two touchdowns. They brought this game. They thought they had this game in the bag. And then he let him down, down there again. He knew what we had to do. We were talking about the play before. He figured you got to get near the 20-yard line, be able to spike the football. Unfortunately, when the pass was caught and Lakovic was smart enough for Petrozello to go down. Oh, boy. One I, second to go. He forgot to look at the clock. Well, I think he, well, I think he saw it, but he thought maybe he, he could get he up could the half second. Mm, boy, well. 31-28 the final in a fourth quarter that I don't think I will forget anytime soon, nor will anyone here that saw this game. The way this was a back and forth, a tremendous football game, and it's unfortunate for Lake Catholic. Their season ends the way it did on that play, just came down to one second. If they had two seconds on the clock, there would have been enough time to stop it. All right, we're going to wrap it up here from the press box, and when we come back, Jeff Morganti will have the postgame show. Our final score tonight, the Walsh Jesuit Warriors, 31, the Lake Catholic Cougars, 28. For Mark Chimo, I'm Mark Schwab. Jeff Morgani's next. Welcome back to our postgame show here at Twinsburg High School, and it is going to be a short, short postgame. Lake Catholic coming up on the shorthand, losing to Walsh, 31 to 28 here in the regional semifinals. What a great ball game. Great fourth quarter effort. The Cougars taking the lead in the uh, last uh, minute and a half. Walsh, though, coming back and uh, scoring a touchdown. Their big play wide receiver, Mike Chambers, finding uh, the end zone and making just a miraculous catch. And again, Walsh holds on to win this one 31 to 28. And uh, we really enjoyed bringing you high school football again for the second consecutive year on Comcast. Uh, and Scholastic Sports, we've enjoyed bringing you the sights and sounds. And once again, uh, sponsorship made this event possible for us. And these sponsors were with us all of this year. And when you have an opportunity, please thank them uh, for us and for you and the schools and also for your sons who are out there playing. Lake Hospital System, Muster Chiropractic Center, Mama Roberto's, Honda of Menor, 
College Prospects of America, Jostens Security Self Storage, and the boosters from each of the high schools in which we uh, were able to do games this year. Yeah, we want to thank them so much. They were the ones that were uh, responsible for allowing us to bring you ball games. And of course, over the last couple of weeks, individual sponsors are too many to really name, but uh, you've seen them over the last couple of weeks since we've been doing playoff football. And uh, for the people who brought you the sights and sounds, uh, we've had so many people do just a, a remarkable and outstanding job, and we enjoyed bringing high school football to you um, on Fridays and on Saturday nights. It was an extreme pleasure, and we can go ahead and tell you that we are doing basketball this year, and we hope the first game we think is going to be the first game, North and Mentor, that will be on November 30th. And we are very excited about the basketball season, which lies ahead for Comcast. We think we've got some great ball games lined up. And once again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Comcast Game of the Week, a presentation of Scholastic Sports on Channel 32 at the beginning of the season and now Channel 22. Once again, we want to thank you very much. Once again, your final, <laughs> the Marx Brothers. We love you too, guys. And, and, of course, the third Mark wasn't here tonight, but uh, Mark Tromba uh, did an outstanding job. But Mark's Brothers, we want to thank you, along with uh, the people in the production truck. Just an outstanding job. They were the ones that kept warm all night, uh, along with the Mark's Brothers who were up in the truck and, of course, or upstairs in the press box. Of course, we were down here freezing, but uh, it was warm down here when Lake Catholic was rallying to come back and get ahead in this ballgame. But, again, they come up short, 31-28. to 28. They end their season at a 9-3 and three clip, and they've got a lot of talented players coming back. And, of course, they're going to be losing a few talented players as well. Once again, our final 31-28. Lake Catholic losing this one. Walsh will advance to the regional finals next week. For our production staff, for our game announcers, this is Jeff Morgani. So long, and we'll see you and greet you from a warm gym at the end of this month with Mentor and North. So long, everybody.